I got to see Europa Clipper in the clean room. SpaceX is about to fly a booster for the 20th time, and the moon eclipsed the sun. Also, uh, Delta Blue and Starship is going to fly soon. Roll, just roll the intro. And here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Welcome, welcome to another NSF Live. That's right, it's our weekly live show where we hang out and talk about interesting news items from the week with very little to no rails. Uh, if you want rails, there's This Week in Space Flight, which premiered this morning as it does every Friday morning. So you can watch that, but if you want to watch us hang out and gab, well, you're in the right place. I'm Jack Byer for NSF, and joining us this week is the regularly scheduled lineup. Starting off with Mr. Sawyer Rosenstein. Sawyer, how you doing, buddy? It is Friday. It is a great day. It is an historic day in space flight, and there's a chance that more history will be made in a couple of hours as well. So, all that said, goodbye, Rails. Let's have some fun. Much like the moon train, we don't need Rails here. EJ, how are you doing, <laughs> buddy? Are you, are you, how's your starship? Oh, uh, it's it's good. I wasn't making like blast off noises. No, no, no. yeah, no. That's why. Why would hey. anybody do that? Uh, I no, yeah, that would be that would be silly and childish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely doesn't describe us here at NSF, not in the least. No. Um, but as usual, uh, if you have any questions during today's show, chat, type them in there with the words at NASA Spaceflight, and uh, we'll see your question pop up in some software that we have rolling in the background. Um, and yeah, generally you try to keep the questions on topic to what we're talking about. But I mean, hey, if you have a, you have a burning desire to know something, I'm not going to stop you from typing it in there. But nice background, EJ. I see, uh, huh. I see a, some, a familiar looking spacecraft behind you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's super super clean in here. I just yeah, it's that's pretty cool. That's, it's, that's I'm surprised nice. they didn't make you put on a beard net and hair net and a bunny suit and a face mask and a whole bunch of other stuff like like I had to do. Like you must be a very clean person. Uh, hygienics is key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although. I got to say, if you, you know, wear sunglasses indoors or something all while wearing a bunny suit, it just makes you look that much cooler. So I, I don't know of anyone who would have maybe possibly done that going to see Europa Clip or anything. You, you know, um, part of me feels like I probably should have gotten those sunglasses with uh, clear lenses, which is a thing you can do, but then that defeats the purpose of them being sunglasses. <laughs> uh, but True. they're also cameras. They're, they're cameras, Sawyer. So actually multiple people... While I was in the clean room suiting up, uh, we're like, uh, do you want to leave your sunglasses? And I was like, no, 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 they're cameras. They're cameras. Uh, <laughs> so, it's the future. No, I think people are just like, oh, no, he's just a tool. That's all that means. It's fine. Right. He, right. He's the guy that wears the sunglasses indoors. Right. Well, I mean, hey, that's generally what people think of me anyways. So eh, <laughs> I'll take it. But yeah, if you have no idea what we're talking about, I had the insane honor of getting to go see Europa Clipper in the clean room at JPL yesterday. Uh, ahead of it being transported to Florida for a launch on Falcon Heavy in uh, October, I believe, is when the current launch date is. Sometime around October 10th, I think, is when the window opens. So, yeah, I mean, 
I don't. I mean, we have a question here from Outdoors Man Show saying, "What was seeing Clipper like?" It. Well, yeah, there, there's me in the in the sunglasses in the back channel, Kevin. Uh, if you want to show that puppy on screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, what it it. I've wanted to go see a spacecraft in the clean room at JPL for over a decade. Like it's. I've been living in LA for 12, 13 years now. I have not had a chance to go to JPL at all. And yeah, suffice to say, standing next to a machine that is essentially the pinnacle of human achievement that will soon be hurtling around Jupiter at insane speeds. Um, completely surreal. Like, what an honor. And, and what, a, what a special thing to get to do. So yeah, if you are a member, I believe we've already memorized all the photos from this shoot. It was really cool. And you can see there um, me with uh, Robin Samangal from... Supercluster, who was also at the event and is a, also a fantastic true, person. Right, true friend. Like, absolutely yeah. 100% excellent bro, if I may say so. Oh, and speaking of excellent bros, it's Jake. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jakey. Yeah, we all, we all put in our shades on. Mine are just blue light glasses, but. Mine, mine aren't okay. handy, so I'm going to be the one guy without the glasses on, which I guess well, I'll just have to. Well, we got the picture of you with the glasses, so that counts. So, you yeah, know, that's you still fair. got the glasses on. But yeah, but, let's let's but talk. You've never been to uh, you've never been to JPL before. No, never been, and they have regular like um, open houses and stuff like that. It's just always been I've either been busy, or my invite gets lost in the mail or what have you. I was supposed to go see James Webb um, before they transported it away, but that also did not work out, alas. So this was a, in, in a lot of ways like redemption for me. Um, nice. Really, really, really cool to go get to see this this machine and talk to some of the scientists involved with the mission i mean i can't i can't really wrap my head around what it would be like to have a project like this that is essentially like your entire career or the majority or a big chunk of your entire career um which i don't know maybe we can talk about that in a minute but yeah clipper um yeah so there's some, a flex that i lost now that you've been to jpl as well but if it's such a great place, and the fact that you were in that clean room there, it's always, always so cool. I mean, how does the, the size of something like that compare to what you think? Like, you know, when you think of, hey, here's a spacecraft, besides the fact that this is one of the largest interplanetary spacecraft ever built, you know, what was the size like in comparison? I mean, uh, it's probably not that exciting of an answer, but it was about as big as I expected it to be. That said, you're exactly right, Sawyer. They repeatedly mention that this is essentially the biggest uh, interplanetary probe that JPL has produced. So, I mean, it was it was quite large, and it was it was nice to to try and photograph it like with humans for scale. They even in the in the left side of this picture, below that green that bright green thing, whatever that is, you can see they even had like a mannequin there, um, like as a as a scale reference. But but yeah, it, it was. Just an absolutely beautiful machine, and I cannot stress this enough. It's just like the the zenith of what we're able to do as a species, scientifically and engineering wise. It's it's just yeah, Zoltan. Thank you, thank you, EJ. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> reference acknowledged. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it it's just like what a what a special special thing to do, and what a cool mission. Like I cannot stress this enough. I wish we had probes going to every single major celestial body. And, and I hope that when Starship gets up and running, that's something that will be less of a crazy thing to say out loud. But By the way, I yeah. think we were looking at the port side, not the zenith, to say. Hey. Oh. So, so the right side of the spacecraft from this image's perspective is like the front in terms of how it will be traveling through space. And it has all of the... Uh, scientific imaging and, and all the other scientific instruments right there kind of arrayed around that that front portion and then of course the giant um dish on top is the high gain antenna um but yeah i mean should we if people don't know what europa clipper is it's got like kind of a long and storied history it was originally supposed to launch on sls by congressional mandate <laughs> <laughs> um, and then nasa was like hey uh we're we don't have enough SLS. What, what is the plural of SLS? SLS? SLS's? SLS's? Slus EJ, slussy? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't. Sure. SLS, <laughs> just like 
Just like the plural of deer. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, so now it's launching on Falcon Heavy, and it is going to go study the ice world of Europa. How cool is that? <laughs> Get it? Because it's ice? Cold? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, the mission's awesome. But uh, I think I think just, just you know, all right, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be that please, guy. Gentlemen. Please be the yeah, guy. I'm, I'm, we, I'm gonna we be, like I'm it when you're the guy. guy. All right. Okay. I think it's an important note. Like, yeah, they didn't have enough SLSs to launch this thing. But something that's kind of a poignant thought is that, you know, it's they switched it to Falcon Heavy. And that's that's fine. But I, I'd like to point out that a, a rocket like Falcon Heavy, it's going to take twice as long to get there. Yes, uh, that's a very good point. Interestingly enough, it's going to take twice as long, uh, which is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Can you put a dollar price on the science of getting it there faster or, you know, just something interesting to, to noodle on? Because, I mean, I, you know, I don't really, with, with science pros, I don't really care what rocket it launches on as long as it does launch. And it didn't look like we were getting that with SLS, but, you know, your, your transit time is going to be way higher with Falcon Heavy. Yeah. So this is a this is a really good point, EJ. Um, mm -hmm. Hot take. Part of me kind of wishes it was launching on SLS just so that it would get there faster. Um, yep. That said, if we're saving enough money by launching it on Falcon Heavy to enable JPL to spend that money on other scientific endeavors, then I'm all for that. It just... I, I mean, I could yell about this for days on end. The human lifespan, I'm right, I always talk about this, is woefully short in the grand scheme of things. And that we only get, like, a handful of these sorts of missions every human lifespan. I mean, one of the project scientists I, I spoke to was, was talking about this as a generational effort. And on the one hand, it's like, yeah, it's cool that uh, we can all come together and, and work on something like this and, and, and do awesome science. And on the other hand, it makes me mad. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that it's a generational thing. I don't like that we only get to learn so much in our lifetimes. If there's one thing that I could snap my fingers and change, it would be to accelerate mm -hmm. these sort of projects so that we can learn, you know, let's send another probe to Pluto. Let's send probes to every major celestial body and learn everything that we can as fast as we can. How are we okay with how long it takes for these things to to come to fruition it just enrages me to an extent I'm, i mean i could mm -hmm. again i could rant about this for a long time um but well, hopefully that's the world that we'll get yeah. to live in once starship gets up and running and we'll get more yeah, i hope so know, orbital observatories more um you know interplanetary missions i, I really hope so but, but yeah to, i mean that, that sorry ej you triggered me a little bit no no so, no yeah, it's, a couple, it's a fair couple extra like it... years i i wish the couple extra years was not um was not a thing but i mean i, I, did, I guess in the grand where, scheme of how long all of this is taking it's really kind of a drop in the bucket go, go now ahead. i have I'll, a question for up. for you guys and i have a question for chat here you know a lot a lot of people say oh well it's not going to cost as much as sls falcon heavy doesn't cost as much but fact that, i mean yes and no you're trading off costs for time here falcon heavy launches it quicker but it's going to take a lot longer to get there and Jack, you said, though, oh, they, you know, it's money diverted to other places. Is it, though? Operational cost over time just is going to, I mean, do you think it'll push comparatively to if it launched on SLS and had a shorter transit time, right? Like, yeah. it's something That's to take into question. account here. You're, you know, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I know the answer is going to be a resounding no, because, I mean, I, I'm not sure if a lot of people in here know about the operations life cycle of any any particular NASA as a program like you know they uh it does take uh, operational cost accounts for usually about 50 percent of your total mission budget uh it, it, through the program life cycle it's about 50 percent and now you're doubling that 50 percent so it it's very i mean with this longer duration mission you're i mean you're changing things about the probe be, because it's flying on a much longer transit time right so that could potentially mean more time, more more useful life cycle of this satellite is used for transit that, rather than scientific uh, knowledge, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I, I get where you're coming from, and mm -hmm. I, I do like clearly because the transit's going to take longer. There, there will be a 
greater associated costs with that phase of flight versus if they get there faster, right? Um, I suspect that the difference in price between a Falcon Heavy and SLS is still like you're still in the green at that point. But it's it's a fair yeah. it's a fair point to make. Um, and I mean, like I said, I, I do wish it had launched on SLS. Only time will tell, guys. And just right. just so people don't get all don't get all bent out of shape. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. OK, like uh, obviously you'd want to, you know, like we're you know, we don't know when the next SLS rocket is even going to get launch, let alone have one for science. I was going to say, like, can, I, I, can I throw in a question here of, go ahead. would the, would SLS even be ready in time? So are, by the time that Europa Clipper launches on Falcon Heavy and gets all the way out there, would it actually maybe be faster considering we still have to get SLS launch and everything for the Artemis program, then we've got to get block two up and running and then consider launching it. So by the time that thing gets off the ground with SLS, the way the current scheduling is, it's possible that it might already be at Europa. So uh, yeah. that comes the question of, are we really saving time with SLS if it, SLS is still kind of in the position that it is? Here's, here's the other thing, too, that I had forgotten, but uh, the excellent Philip Whitehouse in chat uh, brings up, SLS had vibration issues thanks to the solids. They, I, I believe there was a figure tossed around that it would have cost in excess of a billion dollars to, um, in order to launch on SLS versus Falcon Heavy due to the vibrations from the solids. Like you get a smoother ride from Falcon Heavy. So, uh, I mean, that's engineering, right? It's all a series of trade-offs. So uh, hopefully this the set of trade-offs that were picked um, were the right ones. I, I think they probably were. Wow, that was a conversation on the rails. What is wrong with us? Hey, rails, sometimes they exist. <laughs> Tin Man says we're 50 years too late with our space exploration. We should be flying around Europa with astronauts by now. Here, here, but also... Uh, uh, okay, this, this sort of dovetails into why is it called Europa Clipper? Do we, you guys know why it's called Europa Clipper? Uh, no. <laughs> it is called that because it's like the... I guess the clipper ships of yore, which I don't really know anything about, but I guess they would visit the same ports um, periodically, like over a series of a couple of weeks. And uh, Europa Clipper isn't actually orbiting Europa. It's going to orbit Jupiter and then clip by uh, uh, Europa periodically. And that does multiple things. It allows them to uh, not have to withstand the insane radiation environment of, of Jupiter up close and it allows them more time to uh, transmit the data back to Earth because there's a limited um, there's a limited number of antenna on Earth. I mean, think the deep space network, right? There's a limited number of antenna, a limited number of bandwidth, uh, amount of bandwidth that you can get. So if you're if you're orbiting Europa and you're trying to to send science data back, um, you have much less time because you're just going to get fried by Jupiter's radiation at that point versus when you have an elliptical orbit and you clip by Europa, you have a significant portion of your orbit time where you're not in that harsh radiation environment and you have more time to transmit that data. Um, and so, therefore, the spacecraft lasts longer. But I have to do something really quick. Like I said, it's, I've been waiting to go to GAPL for a long time. Um, here is the, the media badge with the important stuff torn off because they don't let you take that. So don't worry, no security violation. But it's my Europa Clipper JPL badge, so I'm going to clipper it to my wall no ah. also the fact that ah. jpl threw the pun in there that it's going to clip around the atmosphere also i i I've, this makes me love this mission more right right uh one pun token I, I, to jpl also i completely stole that from kevin i take zero credit that was all kevin not only that, Jack, but like you, you're talking about how long it, it took for you to get into JPL. I mean, like, do we have to talk about the elephant in the room? EJ I mean, basically it... lives in the clean room at JPL. <laughs> I do? Well, EJ's way cooler uh, than me, so it's understandable. I mean, where are you right now? Look behind you. Oh, yeah. No, wait. This is a clean room? I go to the bathroom over there. The <laughs> you go to the bathroom on Clipper? Don't yeah, do that. that. I thought that was a porta potty. Jesus. It's Europa Clipper, not Europa Crapper. 
Oh, wow. Oh, oh we sorry. Have reached, <laughs> it must be deaf. <laughs> I don't know if we've reached new highs or new lows, but we've reached something. That's a low. <laughs> That's definitely a low. Elizabeth Hopner, thank you for gifting 10 Red Team memberships. We appreciate it so much. And if you got a membership gifted, be sure to thank the person that gifted it to you, Blake Alexander. Also gifting five Red Team memberships, Ninja Decimator, pew, pew, pew. Uh, gifting five Red Team memberships. And Bideford, thank you, Bideford. They say, my three faves, Jack Slayer and EJ. Remember, EJ, we're friends now. Song yeah. Tower Power. I have no idea yeah. what they're saying. Did you make yeah. an alliance? Did you make an alliance without <laughs> me knowing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. You don't right. need to know about it. You're right, I'm okay. not a liberty Fine. to say. No, no, I don't, don't. I don't want to know more. Don't tell me more. I don't want to know more. Would you uh, not like to know more? Uh, yes. Reference acknowledged. Thank you. I'm doing my part. Um, C.S. Miller okay. asking what Rocket's going to carry Clipper. Talk heavy. Caitlin Lindsay asking, uh, why is the transit time longer on Falcon Heavy? Because uh, it's less powerful than SLS? Somebody else that's smarter than me talk. Go. Yeah. Uh, Falcon Heavy is less characteristic energy than, uh, than SLS does. Uh, and because of that, it, I mean, basically, it's less delta V. SLS has a lot more power. SLS, you can go a lot faster. So the probe will get out there to the Jovian moons a lot quicker with SLS. It'll go. It'll it'll get there faster. With with Falcon Heavy, it's still big, but I mean that's the comparison here between like a heavy launch vehicle and a super heavy launch vehicle. You know, this is the difference between like a Delta IV heavy and like a Saturn V rip Delta. We'll talk about that later. Uh, I have thoughts. I have thoughts about mm -hmm. that, <laughs> and and you guys will love them. Trust me. Um, so <laughs> yeah, with Falcon Heavy, you have lower characteristic energy than you would with with SLS. So. It, it will shoot it on a lower energy transfer, which means the time it's actually going to take to get to Jupiter is going to be a lot longer. Uh, and we're taught we're, SLS could have gotten it there in like a couple of years or something. These these are off the top of my head, please. It would Someone have been post the. It would have been a yeah. direct trajectory with SLS. Yep. With Falcon mm -hmm. Heavy, they have to do I think a Mars and an Earth gravity assist. Yeah, so it's going to take, we're, we're not talking like, oh, it's going to take a couple extra months here. We're talking a couple extra years here. Yep. This is a five lot. Five or six year transit, if I'm not mistaken. A lot more time. And the, the, like, the reason why I made that argument in the first place, and once again, I'm playing devil's advocate. The Falcon Heavy's on, I mean, that's, we want to launch on something that actually, you, you know, you have. Like, I, I get that. I understand that, guys. Uh, it's, uh, it's just interesting because that means that, you know, the program, those scientists are basically just going to be sitting there and not twiddling their thumbs, but that, you know, that they're just sitting there waiting for the probe to get there. That's a lot more operational cost that gets incurred here. And now I'm not necessarily sure that's going to equate out to like what would end up being like one launch of SLS, even with uh, the SRB modifications or, or what you guys were talking about. Like I, I, I haven't, I've heard things, I've heard whispers about the SRB vibration problems, but I'm not, I'm not sure that that's like the entire stick of the whole thing. I mean, you know, I, I would contend to say that, you know, not having an SLS booster at all is probably more of a, a game changer there than, you know, just vibration issues. But I mean, who knows? I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, the incurred operational cost will still be a lot more expensive. In At the end of the day, that's you know, the scientists, it's going to take some time for the scientists that are working on the program. They're basically just not furloughed, right? But they're just basically sitting there. And, and that operational cost does build out over time. Uh, and especially if you're going to change the trajectory late into the development of the project. And once again, this isn't this isn't just my opinion. This is right out of NASA Systems Engineering Handbook. Like, I mean, I'm not sure how much NASA follows that own handbook, their own handbook. I don't know. But the operational cost is is a significant chunk of funding for a program. Uh, it's just something to take into account, I guess. Only shuttle centaur. Oh, uh, be still my beating heart. <sighs> Had to mention it. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm warranted. Completely warranted. Sawyer. Um, let's do some more questions. How about if my iPad will cooperate? Dude, I wish Shuttle Centaur. That would have been amazing. I know, right? Oh. Oh, God. Um, D-Pod Dolphin Productions, whoever the heck that is, they said the million-dollar <laughs> question, did Jack have to wear a hairnet? Yes. 
and a beard net because I take planetary protection seriously, okay? <laughs> oh. You can't see it, but there's there's a couple up here, okay? It's I'm like Homer Damn. Simpson. I've got like two or three. Dang, oh. man. You just you just grill them on live live TV. What are you doing? Yeah. Jeez. Oh man. You're gonna do what them dirty I, like that. What am I in Jupiter's radiation environment? Because I just got roasted. Uh don't do that again. I'm sorry. Bad. Don't, don't, I apologize. Just, just don't, <laughs> don't 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 do that. Johnny Please. Cheese is asking, has any of you sent your names with Europa Clipper? I did. Did you guys? I did. Nope. EJ? I did not. No? You just don't like fun. You're like, I'm EJ. I don't like fun. Lame. Yeah, that, yeah, that's me. <laughs> when the aliens eventually find Europa Clipper, what are they going to... They're going to look through the list of names on the tiny chip and go, wait a minute, there's got to be one important name here missing, but we'll never know... Because this guy from Boston never put his name on it. Or, it just means or, EJ will live. And or will... they're going to know your names and they're going to steal your personal information and sell it for advertising purposes. For space ads, yeah. We're probably yeah. talking about 20, 30 decades maybe for that happening. Oh, and, okay. Uh, also, I, I have a Google Voice Assistant, so that that's already long gone. Oh. Uh... Uh, Alex Physics, whoever that is, says this was the first time Jack saw a clipper in years. Wasn't funny when you said it in Discord the other day, and wasn't funny now, Alex. <laughs> I, I literally just went to the barber like a week ago for the first wait, time in years. Wait, wait, how does that work? <laughs> uh, I didn't feel like shaving my beard, so I walked in and said, shave my beard, and then they shaved my beard. Oh, beard oh, they have, hair. Like, the, the fancy brush with the shaving cream on it and the straight yeah, razor, and the, the like straight the 1800s. Razor. Yeah, I'm too scared to do the straight razor, uh, although I love a nice straight razor shave, so uh, I decided to go get one versus, like, horribly Tr treat yourself. mutilating my, myself. What would you say, EJ? Treat yourself. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, you know, it's self-care. Um, treat yourself. And, and Kevin in our back channel is saying, crooked, they shaved it crooked, they did. <laughs> don't, go to, don't go to Caveman <laughs> Barber in, in Brownsville. Um, <laughs> moving, moving right along. <laughs> uh, so about see. not going off the rails or yeah Kanan Copeland is asking what is the operational lifespan of Europa Clipper and could it possibly be ex extended like opportunity and curiosity so forgive me I don't remember the actual operational lifespan off the top of my head I think they're they're going for like 50 orbits in the prime mission something like that um, but like any JPL mission if the spacecraft is healthy at the end of the prime mission and should funding allow they are hopeful that they can get an extension and do even more science. Jazz hand. By the way, I think Jake just realized your beard was crooked and ran away because he couldn't. Oh, uh, darn it. Jeez, you're just getting grilled up here, man. Dang. You know, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be the sacrificial lamb for the, for the jokes. Uh, I mean, Alan, keep in mind, this is a guy that a couple hours ago was hanging next to one of the coolest scientific spacecraft of our generation. Got to give him a little, little flack here. It was, I mean, an honor. If there's really no other word for it than it was an absolute honor. I mean, for EJ, it's every day. Apparently, he has a bathroom <laughs> over there. But, yeah, for me, it was like a, a surreal once-in-a-lifetime bucket list type experience for sure. Oh, uh, Ian in the back channel is saying a four-year mission at Jupiter is the primary mission. Four-year mission at Jupiter is the primary mission. Which, then again, we've seen, you know, spacecraft go well beyond their uh, primary mission timelines. So hopefully that's just the primary. Yeah, it really... no, it, it, it should. It, I mean, it's probably it'll probably be fine. I, I think it's just a poignant thought, you know. And once again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I think it's a poignant thought to understand, you know, changing you know, uh, what would be like a year transit plus four years of science to a six year transit and then four years of science after that, that's significantly changing your stakeholder expect expectations for mission. And that can balloon costs. Uh, it's just, it's just something to point out. It's something to take into account. Uh, once again, I know I'm being stick in the mud here, but it, it, and I'm dude, when, when Falcon Heavy goes off with the Europa Clipper on, I'm, I'm going to be just as Looney Tunes as everybody else. It's going to be amazing. It's just something to take into account, like having to change the the rocket and stuff, and having to change your uh, change something like that well into like 
manufacture of payload is something that can end up being super costly. Yeah. Uh, oh, Alex also in our back channel pointing out that ESA's JUICE uh, probe will arrive at Jupiter around the same time as Clipper. And JUICE, Juice launched, like, what, like last year? Uh, so that that goes to show you sort of the difference in, um, in transit times depending on... Um, the power of the rocket. But the really cool thing is is Juice and Clipper will be... So Juice is going to focus on Ganymede. Clipper is going to focus on Europa. But there will be opportunities for the two spacecraft to sort of tag team um, and, and both gather data on the same thing. I think Juice has a couple Europa close flybys. So um, that'll be really neat. The fact that we have two separate awesome technologically advanced probes in the uh, in the Jupiter system at the same time. Gotta love that. Also, what organization launched that? ESA, ESA, all right? ESA, ESA, you know what? If It wouldn't be a space flight stream if somebody wasn't gatekeeping acronyms. You know what? If I want to say VAB, I'm going to say VAB, all right, Sawyer? Oh, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you didn't <laughs> just say that. The VAB, that's like calling it NASA. Uh, well, okay, yeah, that's that's criminal. We can We can all agree that that's criminal. Well, I think you just did that to Europeans by saying ESA. All right. Sorry, Europeans. I apologize. This is my formal See? apology to Europeans. The Europe, I'm looking out for you. I'm looking One out for our is. European viewers. Matrix is asking, what's the deal with the radiation around Jupiter? I haven't heard about it before. I don't know. I'm a big dumb idiot. All I know is that there is an extremely harsh radiation environment around Jupiter. Does anybody know more than that so that I can stop talking? Um, I'd have to look. Re hey, Falcon. All right. Oh, hey, look, there's a Falcon 9 about to launch for the 20th time <laughs> in uh, just a little bit here. Yeah, and we subject we'll change. It. We're keeping an eye on that. <laughs> so dig with us for that as well. And it did not roll out of a VAB. It did roll out of a HIF. That one, I will actually say the acronym on that one as well. It's a HIF, not so, an HIF. So we can say HI, we can't say HIF, but we have to say HIF, but we can't say VAB, we have to say, it's just like, ah! All right, whatever. I don't care. This is all common knowledge, Jack, come on. I know it is. I can still <laughs> yell about it, though, Sawyer. Would it really be me if I wasn't yelling about something trivial? Yeah, uh, this is where we need that old man yells at Cloud's gift back again. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, we're keeping an eye on, on that Starlink mission. If it uh, does go at the top of the window, it will be part of this episode. So stay tuned. We'll keep our eyes on it. So currently, to point out the uh, current targeted time is 9.22 p.m. Eastern time. And that is still up to date as of this very second on SpaceX's website. Knock on wood. I actually have some wood right here that I will knock on. It was my desk. Okay. Um, RE uh, Jupiter. It's uh, Jupiter's magnetic field. Jupiter's mag uh -huh. magnetic field pulls in a lot of radiation, just like ours does. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you're going to be skirting that. It's like uh, the Van Allen belts on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they had to encase the electronics in like a titanium cube in order to shield them from, uh, from that radiation, which is just like absolutely I mean, wild. Jack, if we can pull up your pictures, the the one that's like super zoomed in uh, of on all the wiring, you can see that these wires are like they are very very shielded against like EMF and stuff. Like they, they got they're thick. They, I don't even right. know what the uh, like mile insulated wrap or something. Like right, I'm not even yeah, sure what we... that is. But I, all I can tell you is that it's it's almost orange. It's it is orange. It's orange. Um, it's also beautiful. Like, can we take a second to admire oh, yeah. the cable management here? The cable management like, is ace. Uh, chef's kiss. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna be quiet. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> I don't know. We zoom. might get demonetized because <laughs> I don't know if this bro, is bro. This is illegal. Right. I'm just uh, those... all the cables on my desk right now in shame. Are those zip ties? They're space zip ties. <laughs> they're zip ties they're basically just zip ties but they cost way more I... space grade zip ties Alex says oh yes I oh. wow Aaron, Aaron? I'm on my desk right now and that those ones are going to space 
Yeah. Zip ties in space. Well, th- no, those got those ones that are there that are on it got to be different than yours because they're space zip ties. Definitely zip like ties in space. <laughs> <laughs> I have no nice. words. Good reference. Uh, Aaron Pickering. Uh, they say Falcon Heavy with solid rocket boosters. That would be hilarious. Although, uh, who was it in our back channel? Was it Ian saying that they did study um, putting a star solid motor as a third stage Ian for Falcon that. Heavy to get Clipper there faster? But uh, was not yeah. worth the redesign to get that done. But I mean, hey, I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was Alex. I'm sh- sure it was Alex. I always get Alex mixed up with other people. <laughs> it's very on brand for me. Hmm. Oh, it's Ian. It was. That's Ian. what I Ha-ha. said. Take, take that, Sawyer. I said that. Adrian is not really asking, but more commentating, saying. A clipper ship was one that carried cargo, but was noted for being particularly fast. A prime example of it is the Cuddy Sark, currently in Greenwich, London, which I'm assuming I'm pronouncing completely wrong, because who knows how you're supposed to pronounce these words. But I believe you just leave syllables out, so Greenwich. Wow. Uh, Apparently it's 100% correct, according to Ryan Caton. Hey, I made Ryan proud. First time in my life, baby! (laughs) Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a uh, minute. This this implies that there's some difference in saying Greenwich over here. There's a there's Greenwich, Connecticut. You say we say it the same way. Yeah, it's Greenwich. Greenwich yeah. Meantime, Greenwich, Connecticut. Oh, now Crispy wants you to say Leicester. I mean, I'm sorry. I already broke that. Yeah, one. it's Leicester. I, I, hey Ryan, I was, I've been to Leicester, so I know it's Leicester. That's hey Ryan, Worcester. 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 Now we're now we're just saying Worcester. Worcester. What the heck did you? Worcester? Worcester. 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 Well, yeah, Worcester it's Mass. Boston, it's Worcester. Worcester what? Mass. Wait, yeah, why are you saying it like that? <laughs> why are you saying it? Why are you dropping your eyes? <laughs> yeah, drop the eye, yeah. I the con have a yard, drop oh. the eye. Oh, hey, hey, I'll go meet you in Secaucus and bury you in the freaking swamp, guy. Why don't you do Who me you a favor and shut, shut your mouth? I I, like I, I need... I'll kick you all the way. I'll stick you on your open clipper and stick you all the way to Jupiter. I need an adult. I need an adult. Hey, don't don't mind don't mind this West Coaster. All right, this is between us. This is between me right. and that guy this over is there. The East Coast battle. Yeah. <laughs> we have better bagels. You have better cheesesteaks. It's a compromise. Uh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. You heard me. Whoa. You heard me. West Coast does not have better bagels. We also have better sushi. We have better basically everything. Except what? for the launch site. Yeah. Deal with it. Uh, uh, I, did, he, did he just really say that? Yep. He, he's huffing that copium, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's hitting the copium hard. Oh, man. And he, pizza, bagels, you know, anything mostly bread related with the exception of something like a sourdough much better on the East Coast, in my opinion. I got to give San Fran its credit with, you know, its sourdough and that kind of bread. But uh, also, Ryan and Chris in the back channel, you guys know I live in New England, right? That that second part, the the names are the same. Just just putting it out there, guys. Just putting it out there. Worcester. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Framing framing him. No. No. All right. Framing also, him. Also, whoever just called it Sawyer dough in chat. Now I'm really hungry. Thank you. You need to, Sawyer, you need to make a branded line of sourdough and call it Sawyer dough. I think that's like a moral imperative at this point. All right. Uh, you know what? As long as it uses water from New York, I'll do it. Chowder. Right. That's right. Um, cool. Well, I think that's about it for Clipper questions. How about we move on to our next topic? Uh, if nobody has anything else they want to hit on the Clipper front. Operations right. cost. Remember it. Do it. Remember. Yeah, Remember but what about the cost to redesign it so it could withstand the vibrations? It was like a billion dollars. I bet that you got to redesign it for a longer cost. transit time, dude. But I, a billion dollars, you're not going to, it's not going to be a billion dollars in transit time costs. A billion dollars. You don't dollars? know that. You don't know that. I do know that. A billion dollars. <laughs> Adrian, thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. Blake, Alexander, thank you for the support. 
Um, they say, isn't there some company in Texas pumping out super heavies that might be available in a year or two to take a direct shot? Maybe wait a bit and go direct. I mean, yeah. The thing about it launching on Falcon Heavy versus even Super Heavy or SLS is Falcon Heavy has launched a bunch. And for a payload that's this important, that there's only one of, you kind of want to have some confidence in your rocket. Not saying you can't have confidence in SLS and, and, and Super Heavy. Not wrong. Um, but yeah, Fal just Falcon Heavy already has sort of a bunch of launches under its belt, so... A little bit more assured mission success there. In my opinion, I want EJ to come through the screen and tackle me here, but just don't. Just don't. Resist the urge. Roseanne. All right. <laughs> Roseanne okay. DeBasto, thank you for the support. They say create a team page on the website listing commentators, producers, photographers, etc., with their home city, state, and social media links. Pretty pleased. Don't we have something like that? I thought we did have something. Maybe not so much the city-state, you know, doxing part, but... <laughs> <laughs> and SN15, the best ship ever. Thank you for the support. They say East Coast, Best Coast, baby. And Jack West sucks. You know what? Everybody's entitled to their opinion, even if it's wrong. You mean even if it's right? No, it's not. It's the opposite of what Bro, I Bro, where's the, where's the capital of this country? Does that matter? On which coast is Europa Clipper launching from? Yeah, that's even better. So I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I can't see you. I can't see you. It's very foggy. Huh. Oh, yeah. I get he must be out on the West Coast. That's why I can't see him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, cool. So what, what should we talk about next? EJ, you said you had uh, Delta Four heavy thoughts. Do you want to you want to rant oh, about yeah. heavy a little bit here? Let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to push everybody's buttons today. Oh, you, re <laughs> you ready for this? From the East Coast argument to the Delta argument. Yeah, it's going to be good. SLS is Delta 5. Not yeah. wrong. Agreed. Yep. Oh, all right. Surprisingly, Sweet. we agree. Oh, all right. Sweet. Yeah. All right, well, now I, I, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, we're good. We're done here. Next. Let's go. Next one. <laughs> but yeah, in in all seriousness, we did uh, finally have the final launch of Delta Four Heavy launching. What was it? NRO seventy? Was it seventy Sawyer? Seventy, yes. Uh, and yeah, it was a beautiful launch. We got some beautiful imagery from our folks in the field. Uh, D absolutely killed it with some slow mo. Max killed mm. it with the photos. Julia killed uh. it with the tracking camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this... absolutely beautiful launch. Sawyer killed it with uh, the oh. photos as well and the remotes. And Sawyer is my favorite human, and he's the best. And I'm not being pressured into saying this. And I'm not a terrible person for not mentioning him right off the bat because I suck. Oh, wait, no, Kevin, you weren't supposed to cut to me with that. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, very true. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a bittersweet, a bittersweet launch because what a beautiful rocket. Seeing it crawl off the pad is just, it's just yeah, so beautiful. It, oh, it, yeah. And that's the thing. It, it's one of those where we were getting up there to set up remotes. This was after all the stuff with the eclipse. Two forty-five in the morning. We're out there in the dark setting up remotes, and you're like, "All right, is it really worth it?" But then you remember, you know, the last one, getting out there, seeing that beast. The second that thing ignited, it's like, you know what? I'm going to put on the craziest show that you have ever seen. And again, I've, I've seen dozens and dozens of launches at this point, And that, I think, is one of, if not the loudest rocket launch I have ever heard. I mean, we were 1.8 miles away. It just That's awesome. lit up the sky, lit itself up first, lit up the sky. And it just kind of took its time leaving. Like, this is my final show. So I'm going to make it last. And That's my awesome. gosh, did it last. That The sound was unbelievable. This was one, normally I like to describe Delta Four Heavy as the one that you hear, but you don't really feel. It's the loudest rocket, but it doesn't really rumble your chest. This one rumbled everything. It, it, it was that, I'm going to give you that final show of a lifetime. And my gosh, I was glad I was there for it. 
so loud, so bright, so clear, just poking through the clouds like that. As you can see there, a little cloudy haze towards the end just made it that much more beautiful. I, I, I could wax poetically about this for another 20 minutes, 20 hours probably, but that rumble, that light, that view, that is the ultimate send-off I could think of for any rocket. So, goodbye, Big Orange Rocket. You put on a heck of a show to leave. Oh, man. I, I, dude, I, I, I think we should just... I think we're done. I think Sawyer just yeah. pretty much summed it up. No one's going to be we're over good. the top, Sawyer, there. Sawyer, did you get uh, any of your prints in the, uh, in the old metal print shop from, uh, from this launch? Uh have to talk to Adrian. I don't think any of mine made it in, but there are definitely some fantastic shots at shop.nasaspaceplate.com from the other team members as well. But I feel like I, we need some kind of merch that says Rumble Everything that's Delta associated. Like maybe a yeah. t-shirt with a Delta on, Delta 4 heavy on it and just says Rumble Everything. Um, I, I mean, don't know. It's a, good, it's a good catchphrase. You have a way with words, Sawyer. They, my other favorite part was just when you listen back to the launch itself, uh, you could hear Julia scream with joy as it went off and the sound hit. And I'll be honest, I, tr I was uh, probably going to do the same thing, but by the time it hit, it just took any single words I had out of my mouth. My body just went, nope, she <laughs> got nothing to say. I ain't screaming. I am in such shock that just listen, enjoy. And that's what I did. Finally, eventually, my body let me scream and go, oh my gosh. You know, it was yeah. so I, someone next to me was just like, it was so loud, that's really loud. I'm like, oh my God, yes. So, I, I mean, that was, yeah. That was one of my favorite parts of, of the stream and of the launch coverage from us was the audio, not just of Delta, which was amazing, but also you could hear at like T plus 10 or 15 seconds or so, Every single member of the media was just like losing their minds. It so, was, oh, <laughs> again, having seen as many launches as I have, including shuttle, including SLS, the noise on that was just bonkies. I, I, mm, I'm still getting speechless again now, thinking back to the moment the sound hit. Nice. I, I just. I just like Delta so much. I refuse to believe that it stopped flying. That's why SLS is is Delta Five. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go H3? out and say, is, is that like Delta Four and a half? Yeah, sure. That's fine. <laughs> it's Delta uh, Five Two Medium Plus Plus. Block Five <laughs> Full Thrust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, look, man. If if Delta Two to Delta Three to Delta Four was enough to keep the Delta naming convention, Delta Four Heavy to SLS. Same upper stage, that's enough. That per Delta's own naming nomenclature and patterns through the that family of rockets going from Thor Able to Delta A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you have 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000. It qualifies, it counts. All right, it counts. SLS is Delta Five. I don't think Vulcan is Atlas Six. I'm arguing with you here. I think we we all agree and we're we're on board, and I, I think. What you're saying is interesting, and I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. Thank, yeah. See, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. No, we're good. But did you did you have a did you have a Delta rant, EJ, or was that it? Is that the, no? That, that was the Delta. That rant? was it. I think Delta is a really good rocket, and I think it's uh... okay. Serious time for a second. I think Delta is an awesome rocket, and I think it's important to understand. You know, it's on its way out, and you know, we should be. We should be, like, should we be mad about this? I don't know. Like, it it kind of stinks when a rocket, you know, sees its final flight. But here's the thing, you know, I don't know about you guys. I've been doing this for a while. I've been, I've been following space life for a really long time. And I'm sure there's plenty of people here that have probably been watching longer than me. Crispy. Uh, hi. Yeah. But, you know, it stunk when Ares 1 got canceled, right? And we didn't have any replacement. And it was terrible when the shuttle stopped flying and we didn't have any replacement, right? Delta, yeah, technically there's no replacement, but there's going to be bigger and better rockets down the road. And these rockets that are kind of filling the niche that Delta IV kind of left is Vulcan, Falcon Heavy, New Glenn. Like, 
I mean, I can't really be too upset. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is the Delta naming convention. Like Delta rockets are are gone, and and Atlas too. You know, when Atlas Five stops flying, right? Like that. I mean, personally, I think I think Vulcan is Atlas Six, and SLS is Delta Five. All right, it, it, that's just me. Just you know, in my own EJ world, okay, that's what they're called. All right, that, that's that's it. But honestly, it's you know, it, I. It's kind of bittersweet, and it stinks seeing the Delta name go after 50-plus years, but you know, we got bigger and better things, man, and they're reusable. So, Right. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I also really wish it, uh, SLS was, was Delta V because then it, it would be Delta V, which for yeah. a rocket is, is just delightful. It's just delightful. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and going back to what we were saying about Euro- Europa Clipper, RE, Falcon Heavy, and SLS. I mean, SLS has more Delta V than Falcon Heavy. It just does. saying. Yeah. It does. Not yeah. wrong. I just, I just blew your mind, chat. I just blew your freaking mind. So much so <laughs> that your background is shaking. Uh, it might be a little bit windy out there at the Cape. Wait, you're not in the clean room anymore. You're at the Cape now. I can teleport. I have a TARDIS. Oh, okay. Duh. I shouldn't have yeah. known that. Yep. Which interior, uh, though? All of them. <laughs> hey, I, I'm happy that the the new TARDIS interior finally has is wheelchair accessible. So, better be can that I, one. Um, I'm flying with you. Can I, right, can I throw fair. a grenade? Um, I don't. I don't really care for Doctor Who. You don't what? I don't really. I don't really enjoy. Um, what that show? You don't. You don't. You don't. Oh. I mean, to be hmm. fair, I haven't really given it um, a solid chance, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> can't be associated with this stream anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Roseanne DeVasto, thank you again for the super chat. They said they looked for that page and could not find one. We should do one. Um, Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. They say, which coast has launched more Delta heavies? <laughs> East Coast. Uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's the East Coast. I'm pretty sure. Just the defeated look, I think, answers that. Pretty sure it's the East Coast. <sighs> Roseanne DeVasto, again, thank you for the support. They say, I would buy my first metal print of the first Sawyer shot hosted. All right, well, store team, get on that. Uh, I'd rather be flying an X-Wing. Thank you for the support. They say, Jack, the more you hype the West Coast, the more these Easterners move in and spoil it. Let them keep the mosquitoes, humidity, hurricanes, tornadoes, and New Yorkers. We'll keep the good life secret. You know what? <laughs> yes. Good call. I'd rather be keep flying New Yorkers. <laughs> oh, good deal. Well, um, yeah. Delta. No more. Sad noises. Any hey, other Delta no, thoughts? A, no, no. SLS is Delta. Stop, stop. You, you need to turn no, that okay, frown sorry. upside down. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Delta. Blame Adrian for not my print not being there. But, I mean, Max and Julia and all of them got some amazing shots. Please go check out the shop for some of their amazing print work. They did a phenomenal job capturing this beautiful, beautiful final launch and it, it's they really captured the send off of this beautifully and poor adrian in general i mean that was adrian's favorite rocket i, I don't know I, everyone just check up on him and make sure he's still okay a week a couple days later of being like uh you know not having delta four launches on the schedule right alas um we have a random question here from michael bertoldi uh, not in the document list, so sorry, Kevin. Um, but they're asking what our thoughts are on Project Hail Mary's book. Because uh, Project Hail Mary is going to be a movie with Ryan Gosling, and it's going to be amazing, and it's such a good book, and it's better than The Martian. That's what I think. About. I'm really excited. Sawyer, well, you've read Project Hail Mary, right? I have, yes. I loved it. I've read it twice. How would, how would you say it compares to, uh, to The Martian? Same author. Yeah, it's both Andy Weir. Um... It is very different in terms of what it's about. I don't want to spoil too much from it, but I mean, the other one is sort of a 
story of human survival and being stuck and, you know, that kind of yearning to go home. Whereas this one is more of a, you as the reader are also trying to figure out, wait, what exactly is going on? As that main character also kind of remembers, hey, this is how I got to where I am. And as I deal with this random thing that is now at my spacecraft as we're all the way out here, it's, I'm trying not to spoil things, but yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it. But at the same time, it's such a good book that I don't want them to ruin it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. Although I'm, I was so happy with The Martian that, uh, you know, hopefully they are able to do Project Hail Mary justice. Um, and if you can, absolutely read Project Hail Mary. And if you can manage to, go into it completely blind. Like, the, the, li the less you can know going into it, the better. Um, but I cannot recommend that book enough. Absolutely one of my favorites in recent memory. I will say I'm very interested to see how they handle the, um, the additional... Uh, character that is yes. not earthbound. Yes, I, I am. Uh, we might have said too much, but yes, I'm also curious how that's going to play out. Fingers crossed they, they do it right. All right, well, I think at this point we should check in with the field on NSF Live about the uh, impending Starlink launch featuring the 20th flight of a booster for the first time. Julia is out there. Julia, do we have you? Why, good evening, Jack, and hello, Team NSF Live. I am out here at Rotary Riverfront Park in Titusville, and it is a gorgeous night for a launch and an even better night for the first 20th launch of a Falcon 9. What, uh, what booster is that, Julia? Um, it is booster 1062, which when we get a little closer to launch, we'll get a little more in depth as to what flights um, this booster has had. But I'm just going to give you a, um, like a sneak peek. This is kind of my second favorite booster, first being 1058, okay? But this is my consolation prize booster because this was the Inspiration 4 booster. And that was a really special mission to me. And um, so this booster's actually sent eight people to space and is a pretty good second to 1058. And guess what? When this one lands, we're going to be positive, of course. Uh, when this one lands, there's a good chance this could go for a 21st. That's remarkable. Fantastic. I, I want to believe. I want to believe, right? Julia. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody somebody Photoshop Falcon 9 into the X into the X Files meme. That's I want to believe. <laughs> uh, we that's all a good believe. idea. It's a good That'd idea. We should put that on a t shirt. Julia, what's the what's the weather out there like today? <laughs> Jack, there's not a cloud in my sky right now. Um, I have a beautiful crescent moon behind me as the sun is setting, which means unfortunately, I'm gonna answer this now. We won't see a jellyfish. Uh, uh. because right now is actually the prime light, but a cloudless mm -hmm. sky is like absolutely perfect. Light breeze, no bugs that usually torment uh, Max out in the field. Now I can't speak for D out there. That grass is a little more wild than the grass I'm at, but uh, this is a beautiful night for a launch. Max is just so sweet, the bugs can't stay away from him. <laughs> although, although I will admit it is just chilly enough by Florida standards, okay? that I do have my um, my NSF zip up on, so. Nice, representing the crew. Awesome. So, Julia, so, Julia, so Julia what, yeah. this photo is what you're from saying. D. Yeah. Excellent yeah, that photo is. showing sunset there. Sorry, EJ, go ahead, please. No, no, I was gonna say, Julia, you, so you're telling us there's no fog at the launch site, huh? Oh my God. No, East Coast, Best Coast. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> And um, uh, let me look anyway. here. Is Alex? No, I don't see Alex. In, oh, wait, I do see Alex in comms. But I do have a little bit of an I told you so that our first booster would happen in April. And that was just my gut instinct. I didn't go off nice. numbers. Ha ha. Let it, let it be known that Julia it's gets okay. the game right points. <laughs> Aw, yeah. Alex, really? I still love you. I just wanted to say for once, I was right and you were not. In your face, yeah, Alex. Julie, Julie made an on-air prediction of it. 
and she was only off by a week, week and a half. April so. 2nd was my prediction. So I, I'm, I am feeling pretty good about that right now. As you should. As you should. So you can see the clock there in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, about an hour and 15 minutes to go to the opening of the window. Do we know, Julia, if it's going to go at the opening of the window? Or or what the what the deal is with that? As far as I know, it's going to go um, at the beginning of the window. But let me look. Um, I'm seeing Yup in the control center. As far as I know, SpaceX is still saying that. So Good deal. Also, so, huge shout out to Julia who for Delta Four Heavy as well on the farewell brought us all brownies, the entire NSF crew. So, shout out again to Julia who's awesome at baking. Okay, it wouldn't wait, wait, be a up. launch. Hold what? up, brownies with or without nuts? Yes or no? Oh, you know what? I I am an allergen friendly person, so I don't put nuts in the brownies or the cookies. Um, they just make it a little bit safer for those. Um, on the causeway who might not be able to have nuts. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're, you made the right call. Brownies well, with nuts in it are sacrilege. I will well, not accept. Okay, well, what about chocolate brownies chips? Brownies, brownies with extra chocolate chips, though. There Let's you go. go. Yes. Let's yes. go. Oh, now I want brownies, <laughs> yes. dang it. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, another photo from D. Excellent. I love these BTS shots. Very cool. Oh, EJ turned into a camera icon. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't oh, know geez. what happened. I'll be right back. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, geez. Why my camera? That's an improvement, honestly. Yeah, you're probably right. You can still hear me, though, yeah? We can still yep. hear you. All right. Cool. If you could just uh, take me off of the main camera, Kevin, that would be really good, and I could <laughs> fix this problem. No, full screen him. Full screen. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, full screen him. Thank you. Thank you. I do. This yes, is a new. There we go. Oh. Quality. Nothing but the best production here. Yeah. Oh, 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 Great. 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 Um, I'll be right back. Earlier, so, Kevin was trying to catch me having a quick snack, but. Yeah. Win. Yeah, for once it wasn't me eating on camera. Um, well, he caught me nice yawning a second ago, but yeah, here. Uh, I'm going to drop out for a second. I'm going to try to fix this. I'll be right back. Right. I think I just found out the advantage of being in the field, although once upon a time in our early, early live stream days, I used to do this on Discord live with video. <laughs> How long yes. ago was that? Oh, wow. man. <laughs> Way back. That would My, be... how far we've come. Demo Mission 1. Or no, Demo Whoa. Mission 2. Sorry, yeah. Oh. Live from US one. <laughs> Love it. Whoa. <laughs> That's going way back there. Yep. Space Pope, thank you for the support. Uh Space Pope. Uh they say, Jack, even though you are outnumbered, you will always have a Pope in your corner. Thanks, Space Pope. Oh. You're my favorite reptilian. Um, cool. Well, while we wait for EJ to get back, I can say all the things that he would disagree with. Let's start off with train good, car bad. Um, yes. Definitely. My Land Rover is a truck. It sure uh, is. Let's see. West Coast. Whatever West Coast. his position is on stubby nozzle, we go against. Yeah. Right. Well, if it, unless he unless he likes or does not like it. If he doesn't like it, then we agree. I hate that thing. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. We'll give him that one. Okay. Victory. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's just mosey on over to our next topic. How about a little, you know, you might, you probably missed it. You probably didn't hear about it. You probably aren't sick of hearing about it or anything because <laughs> it was like dominating the news cycle for days. But yeah, moon went, moved in, in, in front of the, in front of the sun. Um, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I don't think you could have been described any better right there. No, it was, it really was um, truly exceptional and uh, uh, extremely stressful. <laughs> you can see Kevin is cycling through some of the shots from different folks on the team. Here's an excellent shot from D. Um, but those clouds, man, those clouds were not fun. 
Um, yeah, we they were, were all... uh, <laughs> they were tricky for a lot of people. So I want to hear Jack. I want to hear your story because you ended up with some killer video. But Thank you. How did you get to that point with the leading up to like the day before and day of and all the changes? Because you were going to be somewhere totally different. Yeah, so my plan all along had been to shoot from McGregor, which was right on the center line, and I was thinking I could get some kind of cool composite shot, uh, maybe with a tripod stand in there or something. But, um, yeah, clouds did not play nice. So at the last minute, I diverted to Fort Worth and joined Dr. Holly. Hi, Dr. Holly, at uh, the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History, which was a real treat. So uh, there was some cloud cover, but honestly, it wasn't enough that I felt like it did anything other than add to the image. Um, and it's, it's crazy because for a, a period of time there, totality was, it was completely clear. And then like the second half of totality, yes, you can see the clouds there. Let's go. <laughs> I, for, I did not realize this video had audio. I sort of wish Neither it did. Did I. I I do not remember making those noises. I do I do not admit to that being me. But yeah, that that was <laughs> That was something really special. And, and having seen the 2017 eclipse, um, this one was that much cooler to me. I, I don't know if maybe it's just recency bias or what, but the, the fact that we're near solar maximum and we saw those prominences so clearly, what a treat. And uh, yeah, that was one of my favorite NSF streams I think we've ever done. Just the fact that we were able to, to deploy so many people and so many assets. Uh, I mean, Sean was up. I think Sean was in Vermont, got some killer mm -hmm. footage. Even Das and Alicia and Ian up there in Rochester um, did fantastic work. I, I know they got clouded out, but they also got the added bonus of seeing the the moon's shadow approach them, which for me personally has been on my on my list of things that I really want to see when it comes to a total eclipse. I've heard. That that's a thing that you can witness when the conditions are right or when your location is right. Um, seeing the moon's shadow race towards where you're standing, uh, it's got to be one of the coolest things you could possibly see on this planet. So I'm, I'm bummed they got clouded out, but I'm glad they at least got that consolation prize. Um, Plus that reaction that they had in Rochester was unbelievable. Just the cheers, the excitement as it got dark, you know, looking around and seeing all of the, you know, basically seeing a sunset in the middle of the day. Right. That, I think, that's the part that people don't really realize when you're watching this, is that the sky itself basically looks like a sunset, kind of just in the wrong direction, the wrong time. It all just feels wrong, because uh, most people's eyes are focused on the eclipse portion itself. I love that part around it. That's when you really, you know, the whole environment changing, the colors muting, the temperature getting colder, it, everything getting darker. That, I think, really portrayed it the best. Absolutely. And it was really cool. Uh, Dr. Holly did, like, uh, some experiments and had, like, a little uh, weather station with her. I believe the temperature dropped, like, 10 degrees Celsius, which was, you know, you could feel it. You could absolutely feel it, which was really neat. There you can see the moon's shadow yeah. racing towards... Uh, where Doss and Alicia and Ian all were. So cool. Um, and if you want to watch this video, we, it, we did post it on the channel. So it's got all the angles from the eclipse. And you can go back and watch that uh, if you so desire. That. That's what I, most people don't get to see. I love hearing the excitement. I really do. And yeah, 360 degree sunset in all directions. It is pitch black outside. It is pitch black outside. <laughs> It is so crazy. Wow. So this is just like a different experience, I guess, you can all experience with us. The, the clouds that are up are kind of picking up just a slight tint of, of oh God, look pink at the also. Wow. Oh, because they turned on the lights. Oh, my God, all the street lights just came on in Rochester. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at the clouds this over is, there. Yeah, the clouds in the distance. So, yeah, that's the thing. It happened.
EJ, did you get to uh, did you get to see it? I uh, <clears throat> I was I had to stay home, so I got ninety five percent partiality, which I know is not full totality. I get it. That is not the same thing. I understand. We'll go to the next one. <laughs> but yeah, I got about ninety five percent. It was pretty good, man. Pretty good. Nice. By the way, have we shouted out who edited that video? Uh, no, I don't think we need to do that. Moving right along. I'd rather be flying an X-Wing. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> they say a lot of Eclipse pictures have pink, orange, corona ejections and flares. Is that the actual color, or is it because of camera filters? No, that's that's the color. Like, that was the color that it was. That fact, those, prominen those prominencies were very much like a neon pink color. Um, yeah, that's the it, one time you don't have a filter on the camera, actually, is during totality. So exactly, It is yeah. legit. Yeah, the, and even, like, so my shots, for example, um, look really orange because I was using Thousand Oaks solar film, and that's the wavelength, wavelength of light that they, they transmit through. There's also a, a bader, batter, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Adrian might be screaming, but uh, the bader solar filters, it's much more of a white light that comes through. Um, so I, personally, I don't prefer those. I go with a Thousand Oaks. That's just me. Everybody has different preferences. But yeah, at totality, you take the filter off, so it's that you, what you see is what you get. Like you, that's what you would see with your naked eye. Um, it's really quite remarkable. What a what a special thing to have happened. All right, it was Ryan. Ryan edited the recap video. Okay, there. Are you happy, Ryan? Which Ryan? Hayton. Now he's going to tell me I'm mispronouncing his last name. It's probably. Ryan Khan or something, just going based off of how British things are apparently pronounced. <laughs> Ryan says he's somewhat pleased. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the eclipse. You know, I'm sure everyone is is well aware that it happened by now, and and probably sick of it. It's like whenever there's an earthquake here in LA, Twitter is suddenly jammed with everyone screaming earthquake earthquake or you know whenever there's a, an eclipse you're gonna you're gonna see a million eclipse pictures everywhere on social media but just has to be underscored that if you ever have the ability to, to go and see one please 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 do there's nothing quite like being able to see the moon perfectly eclipse the sun it's just a truly wonderful wonderful experience um, let's see if we have any Eclipse questions. Jack Wales is asking if I can make that a metal print. I don't know what that is because this is an eight, eight minute old question, but there are Eclipse prints on the metal print store if you so desire. Let's see. I have not a lot of Eclipse questions. I think everyone's had their Eclipse fill. Hugh Mann wants to talk about how quick SpaceX swapped boosters at McGregor last night. That was a pretty interesting thing. Um, they had one of uh, they had a Falcon Heavy side booster um, up on the test stand, tested it, then lowered it, and then raised the other side booster. Uh, pretty nifty. Oh, look, metal, metal print. Neat. See, the clouds, if this shot did not have the clouds, I would not like it nearly as much. It just worked out. Sometimes the photo gods shine on you. Not complaining about the clouds. An excellent composite from Tyler there, too. Nifty. I have a composite that I'm working on, but uh, I'm, not the, I'm not the best at, at Photoshop. So it's taking me a while. Who's this one from? Who did this one? I can't tell. Photo by Sean. Oh, that one's from Sean. Heck yeah, that's a great shot. So yeah, if you uh, if you are are desiring of a metal print, be sure to pick one up and definitely know that whichever photographer's print you grab, they get a portion of the sale, and they absolutely appreciate it from the bottom of their hearts because it helps defray the cost of lenses and filters and gear rental and travel. And it's a whole thing. So. Um, go, go, go buy Sean's print. Um, by the way, Jack, going back to what you were talking about there with the side booster, I mean, 
the two Falcon Heavy side boosters up and down at McGregor, they've been doing some amazing testing there. Those two boosters, by the way, are for the Goes U mission. And I think it's time for you to goes into a different type of engine that's being tested down at McGregor and something very special. Indeed. Uh, EJ, are we gonna? Are you going out for a pack of smokes and never coming back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean I can, I can stick around. I'm just having some technical problems on my end. Uh, something, some, something's not doing. Something's not stirring the Kool Aid over here. So, uh oh, I might bug out for now. I might be back though. All right. Well, in, in case you're not back, we love you. Thanks for being on. Oh, and thanks, buddy. Hopefully, hopefully you can come back. Yeah. Yeah, let me uh, come back. You can yeah. all on me. Let me come back. <laughs> I'll uh Sawyer. I gotta give the quick computer a quick restart. We gotta turn all it right. back off. Turn it on, turn yeah. it back off again. I'll be right back. Is it Windows NASA Vista? Solution? Yep. It really, that's right. It really is. <laughs> I'll be back in a little bit. Cool. Daily tab. Thank you for the support. They're gifting five red team memberships. Thanks for that. And, oh, God, I always hate saying this user's name. I, I don't hate the user. I just hate saying their name. Snot Garden. Who? Why? Why just, not? Why? Why? It's so graphic. Um, Snot Garden, thank you for the super chat. Now and always. One of those names that pops up all the time. They say, love the Eclipse coverage, the Rocket coverage, and always us appreciate Sawyer's wordplay. <laughs> There's a there's a word in here, uh, maybe some typos. But either way, they appreciate your wordplay, Sawyer. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you, Snot Garden. Um, Nam is asking, how long did you guys watch the eclipse? I have time lapse footage that would make a bad print. <laughs> I mean, I think I got like three or four minutes of totality in Dallas, um, and the whole eclipse was like a, a couple hours long from start to finish. Um, it always goes back, goes by in the blink of an eye. I mean, it's one of those things where afterwards it's like a blur, and you're like, "Did that really happen? I can't even believe that it really happened." I got to see the whole thing, but I only got fifty-five percent, so it doesn't really count as much. Hey, you still got to see it happen. True, and I did get to see twenty seventeen, so you know that was a little consolation prize there. Nice. Um, cool. Well, let's talk about Starship as we get ever closer to uh, Starlink launching in like 57 minutes or so. But yeah, Starship. Big news this week was that uh, SpaceX released the talk that Elon recently gave at Starbase. Can I can I yell for a second, Sawyer? Not that I need permission do. to get. Yeah. Um, when they were rolling Booster 11 out, uh, the, I think the night before, this talk happened. Obviously, none of us knew this talk was happening. But I was standing at the end of Remedios waiting for Booster 11 to roll, and I heard them doing a sound check on the PA over there um, by, the, by the Tiki Bar and by the Rocket Garden. And in my head, I was like, huh, they're doing a sound check, which means there's going to be some sort of talk or presentation or something. And then Booster 11 came out of the, of the high bay, or mega bay, and I was just immediately like, oh, distracted. Didn't think about it again. And then, like, two days later, this video drops, and I was like, ah! I should have known. I should have been able to get a camera somewhere in the vicinity to, to try and document this happening. But kind of a bummer, if I'm, not, if, if I'm being honest. Like, I feel like in, in years past, this would have been a Starship presentation that media was invited to and not just an all-hands employees talk. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm a little bit disappointed um, in SpaceX for that, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, I, I'm, I don't fault them for, for this decision. Like, sure, you guys can do it however you want. But, yeah, in, in, in times past, this totally would have been a thing media was invited to. And it's a shame, in my opinion, that, that did not happen this time around, but so it goes. Well, we got a lot of really interesting information from this talk, mostly in the visuals that SpaceX posted, including this insane render of a uh, super heavy catch on the chopsticks, which kind of looks yeah. 
completely different than I think a lot of us expected it to look. I expected it to come in much more vertically with much less of a horizontal component. And jury's kind of still out on how accurate these the, these renders are. Um, sometimes they're startlingly accurate. Sometimes they're very clearly just like a notional render. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. But yeah, a whole bunch of, of news from this one, including the fact that they're going to try and land the booster on Flight 4 on a virtual tower out in the ocean um, as like a simulated, you know, dry run. And if that goes well, then they will attempt a catch on Flight 5, which is just, in, uh, I don't think any of us expected a catch to happen potentially that soon. Did you, Sawyer? I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we expected it that soon. But, I mean, I really hope they keep the onboard views for that, because I would love to see how that goes. And I do have to give a shout-out to EJ, who did point out the horizontal aspect of it. He called it. I will give him the props where props are due. But, yeah, that, I, I didn't even think that was going to be the case, but I'll give him that credit. Uh, Absolutely. It was really exciting just to see uh, the progress of what it's been like, because pretty much all the animations that we've had of what their plans are for the future have been from like 2019 at this point. So five years later, we're finally getting updated ones of what we're hoping to finally see now, now that we have a starship that has actually flown, starship that has made it across all of the lines that notate space. Uh, it's, oh, we're finally getting real now at this point, and it feels like those renders are more realistic. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if they're able to catch a booster this year, which, by all accounts, that seems like a perfect, perfectly reasonable thing to expect, by this time next year, they could be getting into reusing a super heavy booster, which at that point, I mean, sure, Starship is insanely complicated, and surely it's expensive, especially in the amount of labor that's involved with tiles and everything, but I gotta think that the majority of the cost of the Starship system as a whole is on the super heavy side, given that that's where the 33 Raptor engines are. Um, so once they get to that point, just re reuse of the booster, SpaceX will have not only the largest rocket of all time, but also a reusable rocket, which now finally feels like not something we're going to have to wait forever for, which is just delightful. Delightful. I like that wording for it. We're talking about like, you know, so much power and thrust and all of this for getting down, you know, the catch and all of that, and it's delightful. I mean, I, it's, it goes back to what I was talking about with Clipper earlier. Um, you know, it, it bums me out that... What is DOS posting? It's oh, okay, okay, like wait, knows, okay, wait. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> um... Yeah, it, it bothers me when, when things take a long time. So yes, it's delightful, Sawyer, because it's, it, it, I want things to go fast. We only get to live so long, and we only get to see so much stuff. So all, the more cool stuff we can see happen in our lifetimes, the better. Sign me up. Exactly. But yeah, no, it's, I, I think at this point, it finally feels real. You know, to see that render and not go, oh, this is a pipe dream, all of that. It's, this is real now. You know, we, we could see a full-on catch by the end of the year, and that doesn't sound unrealistic anymore. Right. It really doesn't, uh, which is wild. It's crazy. What is, the, what is that term? The Overton window or something like that? Like, the, the perception of what's possible has shifted dramatically just from this one talk, which is really, I mean, it's, it's exactly what we, the kind of things that we want to learn from a, a, a talk like this. Um, so... We covered the booster, um, the catch, the simulated catch. We covered, well, well, what else is there? I guess SpaceX talked about version 2 and version 3 of Starship, which, mm -hmm. oh, God. Oh, God. Can we talk about how horrible version 3 looks? Can we, do, we, do we talk about that, or do we just gloss over it? Uh, <laughs> I think we can gloss over that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not. I mean, it just, it looks wrong. It's too long. I don't like it. It's like the dog, the it's dog weird. meme. 
yeah, it's like, you got any games on your phone? I'm like, you're you're a rocket. You don't have any need for games on my phone. I just, ugh. I mean, I I get it. A starship is already a unique looking vehicle, but just, ah, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look right. Yeah, I, I saw some people on Twitter speculating that the the numbers in the associated um, like info panel next to the to the renders w did not line up with how much the render of V three was stretched. So maybe <laughs> it was it was just exaggerated for graphical purposes. I don't. I I mean, I sure hope so. Um, I hope so yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, and so here. Oh, here's another another graphic they showed. Um, Raptor 1 versus Raptor 2 versus Raptor 3, and boy, howdy, Raptor 3's looking clean. Um, <laughs> did, did I just break you, Sawyer? Sorry. I think I broke Sawyer. But yeah, they're going to they're gonna remove a whole bunch of um, plumbing from Raptor 3, and they're going to add integral cooling channels, which I guess just means cooling channels built into the structure of the booster itself, or engine itself, which is pretty nifty, but I wouldn't want to be Oh my god, we have what grill cam. Your... First off, what was your voice on that? Second off, hi Das. Thanks for making me hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually extremely hungry right now. Also, he's leaking Discord. Same. Also, wow, the camera is literally on the lid of the grill. Is that just to torture us? Like I'm I'm actually very hungry, and that only made me hungrier. Fine, I'm having a cookie then. I can't wait any longer. Das, what kind of burgers are those? Please tell us in the back channel. Wait, is EJ back? Did I see EJ? Hello? Hi. Hey. All right. How cursed, oh. <laughs> how cursed do you think Starship version 3 looks on a scale uh, of yes to yes? Uh, dude, it's pretty <laughs> bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's, I was... Ugh. I mean, yeah, it, it looks a little weird. I, I mean, I can't help but think that that design will be in flux a little bit, but I will say that, you know, Making the rocket longer is one of the simplest modifications that you can do to get for more performance out of a launch vehicle. I mean, it worked with Falcon 9. Right. It definitely worked with Delta as well. Like, you know, going back from like Thor to Delta, right? That that definitely that definitely is a way to do it. That being said, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. Right. No, thank so... you. I actually, dude, real quick, actually, I want to wanna point something out. If you look at that. Can we bring up that that PowerPoint card with uh, the long, long starship on it? And also, I'm very hungry too now. Thanks for that one, yeah. Das. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly kind of enraged. Uh, also, Kevin, so, we're cutting off. We're cutting off the awful there. You need to scooch it to the left. Yeah, yeah, we gotta. No, he's doing the right thing of cutting it off, so we don't have yeah. to look at it. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a little bit better. Is there a way you yeah. can you can let uh, we just scooch? We gotta like. Zoom in on that thing a little bit because it's it's very interesting with those designs. Uh, if you look at like Starship Two and Starship Three, you can zoom in like reasonably well. Like uh, if you look at what looks to be like a, a, an autogenous pressurization line on those renders, it, the payload bay on Starship Two and Starship Three is the same size. It seems like Two and Three just have bigger fuel tanks. Interestingly enough, you would think like oh longer Starship, longer payload bit. Nope, no, no. Halo base size doesn't seem to have changed, but the and, and once again that just could be the render. It's it it could be, but if you zoom in, you look real close, you can see that the AP lines are going uh, basically to the same point that they are on current the current version of Starship, right? See, yeah, no, wait, yep, yeah, yeah, see, yeah. See I mean, it? I don't I don't put that much stock into the details of these renders because it like who knows if also the, doing the, the hot staging actually. ring on two and three looks more Soyuz derived than what they have right now, it's and beautiful. the grid fins are in a does, weird yeah. spot too. I'm skeptical the the hot stage ring will ever be able to actually look like that, but if it does, I'm 100 percent here for it because it's beautiful. Yeah, you can see the little some changes to the grid fins, changes to the hot stage ring, uh, deleting of the. Um, the leading of the of the engine heat shielding, Kevin. If you go down to the engines there, yeah, because in that meeting, Elon said that Raptor Three has it has the cooling channels for a lot of components. Like, I mean, I don't even know what the right machining term is for that stereolithography. Maybe 
it the, the the cooling components are like built right into the parts that's why it looks like it's so bare bones right uh which is like from a manufacturing standpoint that's absolutely insane uh they're used they must be using some type of i i don't want to say 3d printing exactly because you could do that other ways but it's uh it's pretty ridiculous that those raptors can just grill 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 oh grill. Why are you doing Wait, this? Why is he, why is he flipping why are you doing again? this? You're only supposed to flip him once. What are you doing? He's just hey, cheese. If you're from the grill point. marks, that's one thing, but... And there's also no cheese on those burgers. Yeah, well, no, the cheese goes at the very last second so that it melts on it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold he's, on. He, oh. this is, if this is his third flip, there should be cheese on there already. Guys, open the grill. Open the grill. I don't care. You, I know you flipped it. Open the grill. I need to see those burgers. Hold on. Do it. Do it. That's... Do it. Do it. I don't know if his wife would be too happy about that, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> open the grill, Das. What's in the grill? What's in the grill? Is there cheese already in that? Oh my god, he's flipping it's them like again. It's like there's cheese built, no, into, he's it built off. into the burger. Okay, good. That would be the point where you would put the cheese on, though, is right there at the But the cheese point. is... No, no, oh, he's got the cheese... Right. There's... Yeah. There's cheese in the oh, burger. In. So, oh, so I see. Just, like, now. just like Raptor has the integral cooling channels, the yes. burger has yes. integral <laughs> flavor cheese. <laughs> yes! Yes! But, Dad, that... if you have cheese, do you have bacon inside, too? Because that would be a good burger. That would, that would be... That would be epic. Oh, look at those. Oh. Why? Why are you oh. doing this to us? I'm firing up the grill. Oh. I'm firing up the grill right now. <laughs> We're we're no Dang longer it. NASA space flight. We are NASA space food. No, don't cut Burger. into it right now. They've got to rest. Oh my god, they look so good. Oh, anyways, I Starship. Am hungry. <laughs> oh, now I want burgers too. Yeah. Oh. I'm I'm definitely gonna get a hamburger tonight. Nam in chat to... says full flow cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any places will still deliver to me at that hour, but you're in Florida. Something's always open. You eat those burgers, you have full flow stage digestion. Yep. Yep. Now stage. we're a little too far off track. D Mars, uh, thank you for gifting five red team memberships. And Roseanne DeVasto, thank you for the support. They say it was bound to happen, but I'm disappointed that Elon's SpaceX announcements are only promote his other ventures. I didn't really get the vibe that he was promoting other ventures in that in that announcement, I just wish they had had media there for the Q and A that they cut out of the video. Um, but I'm a member of the media, so I'm biased. So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they they used to do that a lot more, and now we're seeing walls being built and stuff as well. It's a little, a little annoying, but heck, they're still a lot more open than certain other companies that I won't name. Absolutely, absolutely. 9-8 Central is asking, question for Jack, is there a border checkpoint on Highway 4 approaching Starbase? Do you need a passport or government ID? <laughs> so when you're driving out to Starbase, uh, you go past a border checkpoint, but you don't have to stop at it. You only have to stop at the checkpoint when you are leaving Starbase, heading back to Brownsville. And they typically just ask you uh, if you're a U.S. citizen and then wave you on through. Um, but if you are a foreign national, it would probably be a good idea to take your passport with you. So that when you say, no, I am not a U.S. citizen, you can provide them with the relevant paperwork. I believe Adrian got hassled a couple times when, uh, when he was down for flight one, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Ryan in chat is saying, I brought my passport and ESTA, they only ever wanted my passport. So there you go. But pro tip, you don't have to slow down for the checkpoint um, while you're headed out to Starbase. A lot of people, it's like, you can kind of tell as you're driving down Highway 4 towards the beach, who does that drive on a regular basis and who is visiting Starbase for the first time? Because the people that are visiting Starbase for the first time drive super slow because of all the potholes in the road. And the people that drive that, that road every single day, they straddle the, right, the white line. So like two of the wheels are on the extreme edge of the, of the shoulder and two of the wheels are on the right edge of the road just to the left of the white line. Um, and that's the only way you can maintain speed on, on Highway 4 um, and not rattle your car completely apart. So 
So also, yeah. I didn't know you needed to find someone named Esther to go to Starbase, so it's good to know. Yeah, I don't know what that is. America, baby. <laughs> but I will say, though, there's a uh, great video that might be able to help you out in terms of if you wanted to go visit Starbase, knowing exactly what you need to bring and passport-wise where you can and can't go. Uh, I don't know, maybe visiting SpaceX's Starbase, a practical guide on the NSF YouTube channel. Yeah, we do need to do another one of those, uh, since a lot of this is probably out of date at this point, but that is a, still a good resource for a lot of different is, information. Is so Nick out of date too? Say what? Is Nick out of date too? What are you trying to say? Yes, I mean, he's no longer with NSF, so yes, it's out oh. of date. <laughs> oh. what, what? It's, a, it's just facts. You gonna do? You gonna do Nick like that? I'm telling. I yes, I am. I'll text him right. You want me to text him? Yeah. I will text him and say you are out of date. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You know what? I'm committed to it. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. He's texting him right now, isn't he? Hey! Don't forget, there's also. Hey, a video this is a professional show. Say, what are you doing? Know. There's also a video if I don't know, say you were at the uh, Space Coast and wanted to see the 20th flight of a booster in person tonight for Starlink 6-49, there's also a video for that of how to view a rocket launch. Uh, I can't, it's gotta, I gotta do it backwards. I can't, hang on, I'll hit send. Aha, sent. There, oh, you can't put, you can't put, I'm doing the bit for NSF live that, in it? Yeah, come on. That, nobody said that. Nobody said I couldn't do that. You have to, you have that to put that in writing it. before. That, that wasn't in my contract. It still ruins it, come on. <laughs> no, it's um, funny cool. if well, you just text them you're out of date cold turkey. That's hilarious. He'll be like, all right, all right. Right. Wait, what? Where'd this you're come from? Yeah, you're spoiling the surprise. Well, I'm sorry. For shame. Well, we are ticking down the clock towards Starlink, so I think we're going to switch out. <laughs> he responded and said, haha, what's up? <laughs> oh. oh. See, it would have been funnier if he would have just went, what, ha ha, what? Hey, hey, also, you, real quick, I know I, was, I know I was down for the count for this point, but yeah, horizontal landing. Oh, oh man. Horizontal landing. Horizontal landing? What? Uh, horizontal for, landing. For, 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 for Starship, or, or for Super Heavy, horizontal landing. <clears throat> what? Oh. I'm, I'm so lost. Horizontal landing. I called that, man. I called it. I called it. I gave it. you the credit. I gave I know, you the credit. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm just, I'm taking the credit right now. I'm taking it. Taking the credit. Oh, God, it feels good. All right, I'm done. And I God, I'm, texting, that... I'm texting with Nick. Somebody else talk. <laughs> I think that means that we're almost done with the NSF live portion because we have this super important mission here and it's not just your ordinary Starlink. Fun fact, when I am on air and I say that, I actually do the motion. So the thing that I did, just imagine me actually doing that whenever I say that because I legitimately do it in person. Nice. It's not just yeah. your ordinary Starlink. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's switch out of NSF live mode and switch into Starlink mode, 20th use of a booster coming up in like 37-ish minutes or so. Julia, give us a little bit of a rundown on this booster and uh, it's not an RTLS and tell us what drone ship and all that good stuff. Oh, I, I, I had to write all of this down and turn on the light in the car because the bugs came out. I lied. Apparently this is the sweet time for the bugs. So we are looking at Booster 1062 making a 20th flight today. I can't believe I'm saying that. And that's so exciting. Um, I know something that was pointed out. Um, and part of why I think we got to this sooner date for a 20th flight was this is a record turnaround for a booster at 28 days. So Woohoo! The first time this booster flew was November 5th, 2020 for GPS-3 SV-04. Um, it then launched the SV-05 mission and then went on to uh, Inspiration-4. Again, one of those really 
cool, unique, historical flights, um, and it was a beauty. Uh, and then we started on with the Starlinks and then into Axiom. Overall, um, let's see. This booster has launched 12 Starlink missions. Um, it is the 155th launch of Starlink overall. So of those 155, this booster alone has launched 12, oh, soon to be 13 of those. Um, of note, I suppose we should mention there were a couple other commercial missions like Nilesat, OneWeb 17, and Arabsat 7B. Um, and then, yeah, a whole bunch of Starlink. We are going southeasterly today, and there is no stubby nozzle on here. Woo! Stubby nozzle bad! Concur. Oh, wait, sorry. We're supposed to be in launch mode, not NSF live mode. Yes, Julia, that's quite interesting. I do agree that stubby nozzle oh, bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, ind indubitably. Well, I mean, the, the, you know, we can talk the benefit of the stubby nozzle versus the long nozzle. I mean, the stubby with the stubby nozzle, you're not, you are conserving more of the precious alloys for the for the engine uh so right. using the smaller nozzle is warranted during missions that have less that uh need less performance what are what's the metal the nozzles made out of like niobium or something am i even saying that right um niobium it's niobium it's there's there's it's an alloy dude there's all kinds of stuff in there there's inco there's there's, inco? there's all kinds of stuff in there neat yeah i mean you need a you need a special alloy alloy to be able to um, to radiate the heat, because I mean it, it, now Merlin vacuums do have a form of film cooling because they have the gas generator dump going through going through the nozzle, right? But right. also they you know those cool camera shots that we see of Falcon Nine when it's flying up into space, you see the second stage engine firing, the light that's being that's that's uh emanating from the engine is also how it's cooling itself there's a lot of yeah there's a lot more going on than just oh pretty lights mm -hmm. it's it's some weird weird alloy because like once again you can't you can't convect you can't convect all the heat away so i mean rocket engines get really hot i don't i don't know if you guys knew that they do yeah yeah i mean yeah basically you don't lick it except for the shuttle motor you might be able to do that that gets really cold on the outside, but you know, whatever. It's fine. By the way, it's worth, we, it's worth noting at this point in the countdown, in theory, we should be underway with fueling. That would, the go for that would have been given at T minus 38 minutes, with fuel beginning at T minus 35 minutes. So, is there any, we are is there any condensation? At the, is there any condensation coming from the base of the rocket there, or is it obscured by trees? I can't really tell. Uh, Jerry's out. Who is operating the camera for us tonight? Is that Max or D? It is D. Excellent. Thank you, D, for being out in the field uh, and capturing this stuff for us. Also, Julia, thank you for uh, giving us the rundown on, on the sitch, on the situation out there. Uh, we appreciate it. Happy to do so. Um, oh, we have a, a very important burger update. Das is saying that the cheese is indeed inside the burgers, and he flipped them for style, then off cam flipped them right back. <laughs> All right, I'll mm -hmm. allow it. <laughs> mm -hmm. They were they were cheese infused too, yeah. man. Speaking yeah. of Drew Nar, thank you for the super chat. They say integral cheese channels. Exactly yep. what exactly what was in those burgers. And ground umbilical carrier plate. I'm waiting for Sawyer to shiver. No. <gasps> The ground umbilical carrier plate says decimate to reduce ten by ten percent. What about the other ninety percent of the ninjas? Oh, they're talking about ninja decimator. Ninja decimator. Um, yeah, know, that's a question for ninja decimator. Anyways, about thirty-one minutes to go for uh, this historic. I know that wrote, that word gets thrown around a lot, but first twentieth use of a booster, I think, can qualify. Would, would you guys agree? Yeah, I agree. Completely. For this historic I 100% agree. launch of a Wait, booster for the 20th time. We all just time. agree on something? How fantastic is that? And yeah, Julia, I mean, you were... Go ahead, Sawyer. No, you go ahead. Julia, you were saying if all goes well, this one might fly for a 21st time? What, what was the... What's the background there? 
Well, okay. <sighs> Let's talk a little bit about a booster named 1058, which we all thought um, it did have a successful landing, y'all. So that, that does count toward the successful landing count. It unfortunately did not make it back to Port Canaveral due to some not so nice offshore weather, not too far from port to be exact. Um, so uh, we all thought that was going to be the historic 20th booster and it was going to maybe fly for a 21st time or maybe be preserved, but guess what? Elon crushed us all and said, well, no, actually that was going to be expended on its next flight. So we would have, yeah. Um, needless to say, yay spacex they had uh 1058 to do some looking into the wear and tear that happens to a launch vehicle and its engines after um 19 flights um and that brings us to 1062 um guess what it's going to land on a shortfall of gravitas tonight because we are continuing this always hopeful always positive live stream and we're going to be landing 615 kilometers downrange to the southeast. Doug is out there in fairing um, recovery mode at 681 kilometers uh, downrange and this will be the 65th landing on a shortfall of Gravitas. Nice. 65 landings on just one drone ship. It's just and it's the newest drone ship. That's absolutely bonkers. That is kabonk bonk. I I 100 percent agree. <laughs> is it Nine bananas, Central? Though? Is saying so. Didn't Delta Four Heavy second stage have a stubby nozzle, but deployed an extender? Yeah, extend extending nozzle much different than stubby nozzle. Extended nozzle great, stubby nozzle bad. And Michael hmm. Sharon is saying niobium is an element, not an alloy. Maybe it's a niobium alloy, such as Ni3SN, which is a superconductor. Surprised it is niobium and not titanium. It, it, it's not just one metal. It is a bunch of... It, there's, it's an alloy. There's, um, there's no way it's just one thing. Yeah, so how many Starlings are launching on this puppy? 23, as usual? This should be the usual 23 Starlink satellites. And the fact that it's still the six dash means that we'll see it flying to the southeast, uh, going into basically the kind of traditional shell and inclination and trajectory that we've been used to seeing for Starlink for quite a while. Hopefully that will change very soon once we start seeing the uh, Starlink eight dash missions begin. Those are the ones where we'll finally start to get to see those landings basically right in the middle of the Bahamas as well. So it's uh, it's going to be exciting, but for now, this is the mission portion itself is essentially your typical Starlink. Good deal. Well, just about twenty eight minutes to go. It seems like the weather is doing fine. It seems like everything's ticking along. I'm not seeing any condensation from the booster. I kind of would have expected this. I kind of would have expected Shouldn't to see we... that by now. That is because, according to SpaceX's and... website, they are now targeting 9.40 p.m. Uh, oh. what? Uh, just updated, yes. And, um, Jack, oh. welcome to the... This is actually still a normal Starlink mission here on the Space Coast. <laughs> and we scooch to the right a little bit. But let's just be thankful that it is still actually a decent hour and this window does not extend until three in the morning i believe it ends at like 10 54 ish so you know everybody's um, not stuck with us too much longer it'll launch don't worry no i believe this goes till a little after midnight oh no 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 <laughs> uh, let me double check here according to alex's information the last p0 is at 12 48 a.m <sighs> Alex was right about something. Okay. That's a, <laughs> that's a yikes on the uh oh ometer there. Well, you know what? That's okay because we are here together and yeah. we're all still hungry. You were saying about that positivity. Uh -huh. I want a hamburger so bad right now. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's a beautiful night here. 
And you know, if I really needed to, I can I can just walk one park over and be at a McDonald's. Just saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You also what? Have Wait, other what delicious about... restaurants around you too? But I'm sure they're. What about dogs? I'm not. Gotta go to dogs. dogs us tonight? No. no. Oh, that's not across the street from me. His <laughs> dogs are right. Around. Oh, I mean, not that LA place is the Zico, best. None of those. No, no. That's okay no. though. Yeah. What I wouldn't give for a Leoncito uh, enchilada right now. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. I, I could go for some chips and yeah. queso right now. That would be delicious. Oh, yeah. I would also. Why are we talking about food? I'm so hungry. And you would know because all these the places. Launch Again, was in delayed. the How to Fuel launch video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, mm -hmm. Sawyer. We, we did have a video, and we do shout out all the delicious food places uh, to eat. So for, for Ryan folks is very who excited. Are, um, hoping to McDonald's. catch a launch on the Space Coast, and they are... Uh, you know, nearby. If you need some way to know a great spot to watch a launch, you know, NSF has a video for that as well. How to watch a launch on the Space Coast. Um, maybe you'll find me. I'm I'm at Rotary Riverfront Park tonight, but uh, as I said, there's other parks nearby me, and honestly, none of them have a bad view. Just come to US One, y'all. Nice. Yeah, there's plenty of amenities, mm -hmm. plenty of parking, and you get a great view from along US-1 in Titusville there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit of a delay. 9.40 p.m. Easter time is uh, targeted liftoff time as of right now. So we'll keep our eyes on that. About 42 minutes to go. Just a short 18-minute delay, knock on wood. Hopefully it doesn't delay further. Oh, don't say that. So far. So far, Dude. Yeah, good, good point. <laughs> um, keep your questions coming, y'all, at NASA Spaceflight in chat. We'll see your questions pop up in some software we have running in the background. Chris says, somehow all these live streams turn into food talk. Not that it's a bad thing. Now, where's my snackies? Yes, where, is, where are all of our snackies? Michael That's Sharon me. is saying, Nobium alloy for Falcon 9 engine bell. Neobium C-103, Neobium 89%, Hafnium 10%, Titanium 1%. Yeah, not cheap. Thanks Wait, for that. Wait, it's not half Hafnium, is it? No, it's only 10%. What? You should call and it... Why? Then that's a should call it Decium or something. Unobtainium. Decium? I'm surprised EJ is not groaning. EJ, do you still exist? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? We cannot hear you. N nope. Huh. He does no longer exist then. Dang it. Well, that's that's strange. Oh, we hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, much like the guy in the Verizon commercial. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm still here. I've been here. How uh how stoked here, are you just, for just hanging out? How stoked are you for the twentieth reuse of a booster? Oh yeah, yeah, no, this is this is gonna be great. What's interesting yeah. also is they don't really go into exact detail of what it takes to fully, you know, get a booster ready for a 20th flight. This is one where, like we've been talking about, you'd think this would be an extra, you know, lengthy process of confirming, verifying everything, checking out all the engines, all the systems, and yet we are talking a record turnaround time of what, three-ish weeks, basically? Yeah, but maybe we have our friend 1058 to thank for that. Maybe they learned from that booster after it came back to port and um, they did some inspections and, and hopefully maybe they discovered that one more flight really wouldn't make that much of a difference in inspection time. I don't know, I'd like to think 1058 is still contributing. And one of the other things they pointed out with that was when 1058 kind of snapped and had its bad day, um, that this was an older model and that there were changes that were made to newer boosters to help prevent something like that. And yet this booster is still part of that kind of older generation, the older part of the fleet. So it's interesting to see what, if anything, they might have then done as a result of 1058's learning, considering that they're still kind of the same version, so to speak. Right. Yeah. 
I had not heard until that uh, post by, uh, I think it was John Edwards on X. I had not, like, I was like, oh, wait, auto, auto leveling. Wait, what? What are we talking right. about here? It's like, <laughs> wait, it, got it can do that? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, it can do that one since when? <laughs> well, but I wonder with that auto leveling, what also might have come with that was a little bit of um, some other re-engineering in the leg mechanisms because either the integration teams have gotten really good at folding those legs or maybe there were some adjustments so that the sticking points weren't happening because let me tell you when a booster comes in it is getting so hard to get a selfie they are taking it off that drone ship so the drone ship can get out within 24 hours for the next launch and if i don't go by like mm, lunchtime the day after a booster arrives at port it's it's already starting to get lowered for transport so um i have a feeling those legs do a little bit more than we think neat there was one they've definitely was been redesigned oh, sorry no no go ahead man yeah they've definitely oh. been redesigned we've seen we've seen them change from block four to block five at the very least right and i mean i would imagine they'd keep going with it but anyway sawyer yeah, no, I was going to say, I was up there for a launch, and, you know, I, I saw the booster was upright still at the port, and I stayed overnight, and I woke up the next morning, and there was a booster in port still upright, but it was a totally different one. It's literally one Jeez. fleet, and there's a totally different booster in port. I mean, the way that they're doing it is absolutely unbelievable with the pace. Mm -hmm. Julia, you know what we should do? What's that, Jack? We should... We should uh, get a Julia cardboard cutout and put it in front just... of put it in front of Fleet Cam, yeah. and we can just put like a little green card that you're holding, and then we'll just chroma in the uh, the, the you know whatever booster it is for the mandatory booster selfies. That way, you will never miss one. You know, I have done one selfie with um, our live stream from Port in the past because I the weather was yucky. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to make it. Now, admittedly, this was well over a year ago, probably almost two years ago. Um, and I did. I cheated. I was on my lunch break in my car and, and my work parking lot at Walmart. And, uh, <clears throat> yep, I, I took a selfie with um, NSF up. <laughs> it counts, right? It counts, absolutely. Cool. 100%. Hey, uh... I'll allow it. Uh, Julia, maybe you can clue us in, or D, perhaps. Do I see frost on that booster? It sure looks like it. Yes, are we seeing some frost? See some frost I'm, right there? I think we're seeing some frost right there. Why are our voices getting <laughs> Are you working on the novel? <laughs> Sorry. Because sure? there was a white ring at the bottom of the rocket to begin with. Alex yeah, is saying it's the that soot looks lines. like soot markings. I mean, ah. admittedly, I'm not looking at it through my camera, because my camera has wide-angle lenses today, but um, that looks like it's one of the weld lines that they may have inspected. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, that's one of the usual lines. It's been there. Just getting my hopes up here. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> no, no, it's a you. little early for fueling. Anyways, yeah, we wouldn't. You... It would be starting yeah. in about 30 seconds, theoretically. But yeah. Yeah. So nice we'll hopeful, though, for that, that. keeping up that positivity. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm just, yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to keep the boat afloat, you know? Hey, it's um, on Mars. Sawyer. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, Julia. Julia. I'm so sorry, Jack. Hey, no, Sawyer, no, uh, when y'all were packing up from that um, last launch we did out there on the causeway, did anybody by chance find a um, remote trigger? Because it's oh, not no. in the car. I don't think so. Boo. Was it a MyOps? No. No. Oh, goodness, no. Okay. No, I know exactly Whew. which one you're talking about. It was the, the black remote type one, right? Yeah, it was just a corded trigger. I am only asking because I'm not going to guarantee on stream that, that I'm going to be sending you all a picture um, of launch because I like to share the launch streak with those who tuned in to the stream before I tweet it. Um, because I can't find that trigger. Um, no. But that's okay. 
Um, I, I'm actually using my film camera, which again, I can't share that with y'all um, on this stream, but I do have a trigger for that one. And I do have film because it was uh, the last launch of a Delta. So um, wish my cameras good luck, I guess. And we'll see what we get tonight. But chat, still wish, me on stream. Good luck. Julia's wish Julia's camera. camera. Wish Julia's cameras. <laughs> good luck, chat. I want nothing but good vibes in chat for Julia's cameras. That's really cool. You're shooting it on film, Julia. Yeah, film film is I love shooting on um I think I have uh do I have Ilford film in there this time? Um it's been a while since I've done black and white film and I just love um I don't know. I just love how it's okay to be grainy on film and um it's also the very first camera I ever owned, guys. It's my Olympus OM2. And I still have nice. it from high cool. school. Yeah. That's amazing. So stay tuned. Um, this is probably the last. No, wait. I think I'm going to do like a return to port. And then I'm going to drop off my film for actual film processing and getting back actual film uh, in Orlando. I'm being told, nice. Julia, from someone that was with me there that Max might have picked it up. So. <laughs> So that would be nice. Or when I go drop off my film, I'm buying a new trigger. <laughs> at least not. At least it wasn't a myops because those things are like 150 bucks or something crazy like that. 50 so that, bucks. 150. Oh, okay. I was just making sure you were okay over there, Jeff. Did you say 150 for a myops? What are they? More like 200 now? Yeah. yeah. Gee, my knee. And for all you techies out there, I know there is a way to use my MyOps on my camera to do a streak, but that's not something I've ever done before, so we're not going to try that. No worries. Uh, I'd rather be flying an X-Wing, so thank you for the super chat. They say, while we wait, future business plan for you, imagine a few NSF tour boats giving guided tours for offshore starship launches, I'd pay good money to have Jack Sawyer Doss blather at me about rockets. <laughs> you well, know, Jack. Not... What's up? You know who you could team up with? Uh-huh. Starfleet who? Tours. <gasps> that would be pretty cool. Yeah, then you could you could do what I do here on Cape sometimes. We go out for sunset tours. You get to see what you can see along the coast and have somebody actually point out what pads and historical monuments you can see. Um, but you can do that down there, I bet you, when Starfleet's having, you know, maybe a sunset viewing of Starship. <clears throat> They've done that. They've been there for launches for Starship. <laughs> mm hmm Nice. Good call. What, why does the Bands idea of Mars. Jack on a boat make me laugh? What? I don't whoa, understand whoa, that whoa. One. What makes you laugh? Why does the idea of Jack on a boat make me laugh? Chat, Buddy, I, anybody? I grew up in Florida. Like, we had, we had a boat. I existed yeah, no, it's just, many it's just hours funny on a boat in my childhood. How have I not been on a boat with you down here, Jack? I don't know. It needs to happen. Needs but I to have happen. been on a boat with us. We're on a boat. We're on a boat. And it's going I'm... fast, and Wow. Uh... Rosanna Vasco, <laughs> aw, the $20 super chat saying, help to get a new one, Julia. Aw, that's so nice. Thank you, Roseanne. Aw, thank you. I think you. we got Frost now. And Man's on Mars, thanks for the super chat. They say, favorite moon rover, which of the three would you rather drive, which of the three would you rather drive down the road to get some food? Oh, which yes. of the three moon rovers would we drive down the road to get food? I have no idea. The... Dude, intuitives all day. All right. Intuitive. I mean, wait, does 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 the JAXA pressurized rover count? Does that count or is it just are we just doing the, the three other ones? I mean, we Cause... if you want it to count, it can count. I mean I mean for me, whichever one will get me there fastest, because I'm really hungry and I think we can safely say that Falcon 9 is getting quite thirsty and, in fact, quite frosty as we have confirmation from SpaceX that the propellant load has begun for tonight's launch. And you can even see it there at the base of the rocket. Hooray! So we are into fueling. That is exactly what we want to see as we are just under 30 minutes to go for Starlink launch 6-49, the first 20th flight 
of a Falcon 9 booster. <laughs> Meaningless? What is going on in chat right now? Meaningless with a $2 I love super it. chat saying Jack in kayak and Ninja Decimator with a super <laughs> chat saying Jack in a kilt. Why is it never EJ in a kilt? Or why is it never Sawyer in a kayak? Like, why? Come on now. No, please keep the Jack in a right. thing going. That's, that's yeah. Jack in a oh. boat. Kayak Jack in Jack. a truck. Wow. Kayak Jack. It makes sense. It, moving right along, there's a tweet from SpaceX confirming that prop load is underway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Princess Jules is asking, what is going on behind the scenes? What cameras and lenses are you guys using? So, Julia, you talked to us about your film camera. What is the other camera that you are running? Um, well, in all honesty, the other camera that I'm shooting with tonight is, <laughs> it is a, a Nikon D3300, so it's a crop sensor. It has a 10 to 24 millimeter lens on there. Normally, it would be set uh, ISO 100, F16, and I would leave the shutter open. Um, well, tonight, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to see the reentry burn. Normally, I would honestly leave the shutter open like that full eight minutes. Um, I don't know how long it'll stay open today, uh, but that would be kind of a typical streak shot setting from US1 here in Titusville. And that, again, is another camera that's kind of special to me because that was my first DSLR. Nice. My first DSLR was destroyed by Booster 7 during the boost, first Booster static fire. And that makes me sad because that Ooh. Canon 60D has been all over this planet. But you know what? That's a, if it's going to go, it's going to go out with a bang. And uh, yeah, Booster 7 Static yeah. Fire, I think, qualifies. I can tell you I've only set my red D3300 at one remote set, and I was so afraid to do it. But I really needed to do it because it was, the time I did set it was SLS. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted at least one more extra camera out there, and it was set very far away from the pad, because if you think I'm setting a camera in danger zone over by Starship, you guys are all crazy. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't got disposable cameras. I barely got enough cameras. <laughs> oh, completely fair. And the, it's funny, because with Starship Launch 1, it was like every camera was completely destroyed. Starship Flight 2, not a scratch on anything. And then Starship Flight 3 was like, 50 or 60% of the cameras were completely destroyed. <laughs> so it, I, we have gone from thinking that that particular location is like, you know, instant death for cameras to perfectly safe to now it's just like, good luck. Okay. So, um, so Jack, what I need you guys to think of when you set at Starbase is it's just like going to launch complex 41. You think you are out of the danger zone. Right. Yet somehow something with some solid or oh shoot, even when it doesn't have a solid, but usually with even one solid, you think you are out of the trench zone. And yet you're going to go pick up your camera and it is going to be covered in some sploosh that will never, ever, ever come off of your gear. By the way, it doesn't matter when you wipe that off or <laughs> how you do it. it your, your gear will permanently have like, oh, yeah, like gray sploosh on it. Um, yeah. there is no safe area for cameras in, in oh man, you know. Who was it that rubbed their eyes after touching a camera with solid residue on it? Was that Max? I think that was Max. I learned my lesson really, really quick and somehow I didn't learn my lesson. Um, I went and picked up cameras once. Uh, not wearing long sleeves, and I threw my gear over my arm to carry it. Got in the car, and I wanted to cry because I itched so much. Um, thank goodness for baby wipes in the car. Um, I always have gloves in. Like, we recommend you wear some sort of gloves when you pick up your gear. Um, maybe put a blanket in your car to lay them on. And I always have gloves in my bag, and somehow the gloves... Gloves never make it out of the bag at pickup. So um, <laughs> anybody getting into remote setups, anytime you want to be dealing with uh, solid rocket boosters, please, please 
I don't care if it's 100 degrees outside, wear long sleeves and bring gloves. That's exactly what happened to me on the last one. I was telling so many people, make sure you wear gloves. We wear gloves to pick it up. And so I'm out there and I just pick up the first tripod and my hand just starts tingling. I'm like, oh, I'm a dummy. I forgot the gloves. It happens. Fun fact, back in the shuttle era, the, the folks that would work at the um, tracking cameras, especially the ones closer to 39A or 39B, um, their, their vehicles, as they went to um, tidy up over at the tracking stations, their vehicles would get basically the equivalent of um, like acid rain marks on on their trucks and cars uh just because even though launch happened that's still settling in the air and uh yeah i had camera people telling me about how normally cars don't rest in florida unless you you know work shuttle oh that's so cool with all the shuttle video stuff yeah those like tracking shuttles. cams and that engineering footage to die for you viz yes <laughs> by the way uh I do want to just mention really quick in terms of answering that question of the cameras and stuff. Totally random, but the exact same setup that you have out there right now, Julia, is the same setup that I use for NSF Live. Nikon nice. D3300 with a 1024. Nice. Nice. Here I am just, just using my webcam like a plebeian. Yeah, I would be a webcam person. You're fancy, Sawyer. <laughs> I want to look good. What can I say? I, I got a lot <laughs> yeah, ugly to work with, so I got to make something look good. No, nah, it's the only it's the only way you could translate your the amount of riz you have fully on on screen is by having a proper camera. You, you say to the riz? single man, thank you. But I appreciate it. But anyway, speaking of shuttle, this is actually happening on quite an historic day as well. It is worth mentioning that April 12th has two significant spaceflight occurrences that occurred. Well, um April 12th, 1961 was the First time a human flew into space, and that was Yuri Gagarin from the Soviet Union. And the train, obviously, concurring with that. And also, April 12th, 1981, John Young and Bob Crippen launched aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia on STS-1, the first ever launch of the Space Shuttle program, the first of 135. So, we have that, and now... We are approaching the 20th flight of a booster here for SpaceX as we come very close to the best vent. Excellent. And uh, to, to wrap up answering the question, uh, D is using uh, for the live cams a BGH-1 with a 150 to 600 and a two times teleconverter. And the wider shot that we're looking at right now is a Z-cam E2M4 with a 400 millimeter F2.8. Thank you for that, D. And good question from Princess Jules. All right, I guess I, I have to I have to hit these before the 20-minute event. Austin Skirvin, thanks for the $5 tip. They say jack and a kayak and a kilt. And they did it again. <laughs> uh, Master Toymaker, thank you for the super chat. They say jack in a box. Waiting <laughs> list says jack and a kilt on a kayak. Uh, Kyle is asking if we're able to insure our cameras, and thank you for that super chat. Yeah, we are able to insure them, although I have not yet tested uh, making a claim on a camera that has been destroyed by a rocket. I feel like <laughs> they might be like, well, you put it next to a rocket, dummy. We're, <laughs> you get nothing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Lee Robertson, thanks for coming a Pad Rat member. Ninja Decimator, pew, pew, pew. Thank you for the super chat. They say Jack and Coke. Matthew Scott McMillan with a $100 super chat. Holy cow. They say, Jack, instead of a kilt, have you thought about wearing a pair of lederhosen? I can honestly say that no, I have not. But <laughs> holy cow, thank you for that extremely generous super chat. That is absolutely outstanding. And here is the reward for being so kind to us is we get the views of the T-20 minute event happening right now. So oh, that is yeah. a good indication here in terms of the progression of fueling up the vehicle as uh, that typically indicates that the RP-1, the rocket propellant 1, the refined kerosene, is completed in terms of loading on the second stage. Now they will be clearing out the lines, and that will take about four minutes, leading up to the start of loading of liquid oxygen on the second stage at about T-minus 
15 minutes. And this also gives a great indication of what the weather and the winds and things like that are like. So Julia, how is the weather and wind and all that right now? I'm not going to lie to you. I still don't see a cloud in the sky. In fact, I see stars. So that's magnificent. Um, I don't see low fog. And it's just breezy, which is a normal breeze for this um, area because we are just offshore of the Atlantic Ocean. So we get a little ocean breeze. It's very pleasant. I wish you all could join us, you know, out here on the coast because it's a beautiful night. I thought for sure you were going to say best coast. Best coast. <laughs> uh, Roseanne yep. DeVasto, thank you for the super chat. They say, we would love to know how to follow the team. Uh, we'll pay attention to our like little info cards that, that pop up. Um, that usually has our socials on there. But yeah, we should, we should come up with like a team member page or something like that. Matthew Scott McMillian. McMillian. Gifting Mac 50 Red Team memberships in addition to the $100 Super wow. Chat a moment ago. Holy cow. Matthew, I don't, even, I don't even know what to say. That's such an exceptional amount of support. It always goes without saying that we can't do this without y'all's support. And the memberships are the bedrock on which NSF is built. So it's, it's just we love what we do. And you're enabling us to do what we do. And you're being cool to 50 people by giving them a, a Red Team membership. So if you got a gift of membership from Matthew, be sure to thank them. And if you can't support us monetarily, that's completely fine. We love you just the same. Um, everybody, especially people like Matthew, are uh, picking up the slack. So no worries. Just We just appreciate that people are excited about space flight and we get to hang out and do this. Uh, Kyle... Grass mid, thank you. Oh my God, hundred dollars super chat. What the heck, Kyle? Wow. Thank you so much. They say camera replacement fund. Thank you. That is that is absolutely outstanding. I, I, I hundred dollars is so much money. Like, how do I how do I even convey adequate thanks? Thank you. Yeah, that, I mean that's what you usually do. Yeah, thank you. Red. Oh, EJ's still here. Seriously, Hi, EJ. No. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, I wasn't uh, taking, you know, near the Europa Clipper. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, yeah, we got we got some venting going on. I'm still here, still here. And that's beautiful. Sweet. Hardly any breeze venting that you guys are seeing today. I love it when it hangs in the air like that. Shannon yeah. Stevens also also gifting five red team memberships. Thank you, Shannon. Julia, Anonymous is asking, do Starlink missions have the same amount of spectators compared to other SpaceX launches? Um, well, it depends. Uh, we just got done with kind of the spring break time of the year because of uh, Cocoa Beach. Um, I would say, mm, oh boy. That's that's really a tough question because it's hard to say. See, locals don't come out until about 10 minutes to launch. Uh, are there as many cars lined up here as there were for Delta? No. Um, if it's a Friday night and it's a Starlink, honestly, that's kind of like Friday Night Lights football around here. Uh, we just do it with launches and there are more people lined up. It is... Um... Oh, wait, it is Friday. Wow. Sorry, guys. Um... I'm feeling like oh, the park no I'm at today is actually quite quiet. Uh, but for the most part, we love our launches and people come out for them. Um, do they travel for Starlinks? No, not not really, though. Starlinks are like the bonus launch, right? Where it's like, I'm going to see a launch of X or Y. Oh, also, I probably will see two or three Starlinks, depending on how long I stick around in town. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and it used to be... Oh, you, know, you might catch a launch in a week. Um, or if you don't catch a launch, we might give you a bonus return to port. And now I can tell you, you might catch two launches and a return to port um, in that span of a week that you're going to be here. So, um, yay, launch cadence. And the yay, other thing. Yay. Yeah, I don't hate this. I was going to say, I think the other thing that influences how many people are out there is. Well, A, time of day, 
you know, the 2, 3 a.m.s, you don't get as many people out there. But also, the fact if it's an RTLS or not, I think, changes a lot as well. You tend to see, I mean, it's not dramatic difference, but you tend to see more people out if it's an RTLS-type mission as opposed to just a regular Starlink. So it's not so much the mission profile itself for some of them, it feels like. I don't know if you agree with that, Julia. Oh, you wanted a response from me. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, it does make a difference if there's an RTLS and the time of day, especially because um, time of day definitely dictates if you can go certain places like Playa Linda Beach. Um, I always recommend if something is launching from 40, um, 41 or 39 and Playa Linda Beach is an option, always pick that option um, because it's a gorgeous view of launch. Um, so yeah, that definitely makes a difference or if it's um, a Falcon Heavy, right? And we don't see those as often, even though we went through a streak of them earlier this year. Um, as a general rule, those aren't common. So, yeah. Um, and if it's kind of the first time of something, like uh, something that will make a difference coming up soon would be Starliner um, with crew. And that will impact the flow of visitors to the area. I'm I'm learning in our back channel that we are working on a special thing. I don't want to spoil it in case it doesn't work, but there is a special thing that we will talk about at such time that I am told that we can talk about it. But yeah, yeah. stay stay tuned in for 12 minutes and 30 seconds ish, and uh, perhaps there will be something really cool. If it comes through, it'll be great. I know we've been working it throughout the day to try and make it happen, so we shall see. Uh, Matt Hicks, thanks for the super chat. They say, introduction for my girlfriend to NSF. Matt, thank you for the super chat. Matt's girlfriend, hey, if you can put up with us, then uh, you should be smooth sailing for your entire relationship. And Matt, if she does <laughs> put up with you watching us, then hey, you found a keeper. Uh, Matt, my apologies to your girlfriend, um, and welcome. Thank you for joining our stream. Cameron Roth, thank you for the support. They say, watching from Cars Park Pier, go Falcon 9, go. Nice choice, Cameron. Hey. Good luck tonight with your views. Sounds like with the clear skies, you should get a beautiful one here in just about 11 minutes you, and 30 seconds did i hear cars park enjoy that downrange view you are going to have a gorgeous view at cars park tonight nice indeed matrix is asking do we think this booster will fly, fly a 21st time or will it be retired after this flight we talked about this a little bit but uh, julia why don't you take us through it again I absolutely think it's going to go for a 21st flight. I mean, why not? I, I think SpaceX is aiming to go at least 50 flights. So um, there's got to be a booster that does it, and I'm betting this is the one. Fantastic. 9-8 Central is asking, why does the strong back tilt back at a different angle at Vandenberg than at the Space Coast? Oh, uh, Jack, pick me, pick me, pick me. EJ, go. It's because the one at Vandenberg is an older design. In the older versions of Falcon 9, starting with 1.1, had the strong back move back to 77 degrees, so it gets out of the way because of the stuff that comes out of the bottom of the rocket when it launches. That can damage things. Now, over time, SpaceX uh, moved to what's called, at, at Pad 40 and Pad 39A, they switched to a throwback style which swings the strong back away really, really quick when the vehicle takes off to get it away from the hot stuff that comes out of the bottom. It damages things. So yeah, uh, 39A and 40 have that throwback transporter erector and Vandenberg still has an old school style one. That, that is actually one of SpaceX's oldest pieces of hardware. It, to my knowledge, that's real. that thing is from like 2013. Really, really old. They've redone the reaction frame at, at Vandenberg, but the transporter erector is still the one that's been there for a really long time. That was the first 
uh, SpaceX had to launch a Falcon 9 1.1, if I'm remembering correctly. It's uh, That's pretty cool. But yeah, 40 and 39A have since been redone for various reasons. 39A because SpaceX got the lease for the pad, and 40 because, well, we'll just say the pad needed to be updated, and we'll call it there. But these ones only retract to 89 degrees because they throw out of the way when the vehicle launches. Here's another one for you, EJ. Uh, oh, Soul 24 me. Alt is asking, what features of the Merlin engines make them able to be reused so many times? Um, well, one, first, it's the, it's the type of fuel injector on a uh, fuel injector plate. I, well, it's not really a plate, but uh, one, you know, to, to reuse a rocket engine, you got to get it back. And to do that, you need to th- throttling the engine. You got to throttle it so it can, so you can land. You don't need that thing going full blast right when you come, come down near the ground. So part of that is the injectance, the injector plate system. I mean, I don't even know if you call it the injector plate, but Falcon, Falcon nine's engines use a pintle injection system. Uh, basically where they're spraying the, the, their fuel and oxidizer delivery mechanism is a radial. It's delivered radially in the combustion chamber instead of um, axially. So it's shooting off to the sides instead of shooting down. It, it's actually a, de- a design that's derived from the LMDE on uh, from the Apollo lunar lander, the lunar module descent engine. And that and the throttle ability is part of the reason why they can get it back. Now, in terms of, you know, reusing it over and over again, it's most likely that Merlin, when it hit you know when they when they engineered the the motor they set very conservative thrust ratings for it so they could stretch it out over time uh so you know i mean rocket science is a little more precise than what i'm about to say you do a theoretical maximum here of like say i don't know 150 percent of rated performance say the say the rocket engine can make 1500 kilonewtons of thrust okay uh you would rate that at a thousand that way you know it's never going to break it's never going to break. It's ne- I mean, it's never, it's never going to exceed its load cycle. So you, you know, the engines, are, the, the engines are a little bit over engineered. But I mean, I would still say that the you know first thing to reuse is getting your engines back, and you need to be able to deep throttle the engine so you can land the thing. Makes sense. Super important. But yeah, they're all over engineered. That's the short answer. Ed Fernandez, thanks for becoming a Padrat member. Richard Cochran, thank you for the 20 quid. They say 20 quid for 20 launches. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, Brondo, baby. it's got what plants crave. Thank you, Brondo, for the $100 tip. $200 tips. Wow. They say, just wow. spent the day at Boca Chica. It was awesome. Thanks to Doss and Stupor Steph for awesome restaurant recommendations. Ooh, did you go to Bigos? Um, Bigos is delicious. Um, Brando, thank you so much. That is an insane amount of support. And it it's again, it's just so um appreciated. And and I I yeah, I don't even I don't even know what to say. We again, we love what we do. We love that we get to do this. It's the best job in the world. And uh y'all are the best for 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 that much support. That's insane. I'm glad you had a good time in Boca. Julia we got under six minutes to go. Should we send you off so you can do your camera thing? Uh, sure, we can send me off so I can do the camera thing, and then I will come back and tell you all how it went and what I saw and, and the crowd reaction. How about that? Excellent. Well, Godspeed, Julia. Take some good photos, and we will see you on the other side. Thanks so much, Jack. Space Kid is asking, would they, could they launch Starlink on a Falcon Heavy? Maybe once they get the extended fairing going, that's something that we'll see happen, but I suspect uh, by that point, it'll be all Starship all the time. I don't know. What do you, what do you all think? I think I mean, that's overkill. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I was actually going to, like, I don't mean to answer a question with a question, like, but why? Falcon 9 can do it just fine. What, why are we using a Falcon Heavy to put Starlink satellites up there? That's, more Starlink. I mean, you could. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess that would make sense. But yeah, I mean, Jack, what you said, you know, Starship should be ready for with the V twos by then. I mean, and how much more satellites are you delivering every time for for integrating and building a whole Falcon Heavy stack? Maybe you could move double. Why not just launch two Falcon Nines? I mean, launch cadence clearly isn't an issue here. Right. Yeah, I don't right. think Plus it's- like it's, it's three times the work just notionally with a Falcon heavy versus a Falcon nine. 
I don't think even with the extended fairing, you're going to get three times the satellites. So yeah, go ahead. Right. And that's the thing is the fairing size is going to be your constraint, not the mass. So in the meantime, speaking of constraint, the uh, claw arms that are kind of around the base of the fairings should be opening up and the strong back should be retracting right about now that whole 1.8 degree retract uh, as we hit four minutes to launch. Butter smooth segue there, Sawyer. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Alex on our back channel saying, please launch first under three day turnaround. Is that for, I assume that's for Slick 40? That's really neat. Please launch. Just under four minutes to go. Well, for, that would have to be SpaceX in general. Yeah, the first time that they've uh, launched in under three days between missions, which is, again, unbelievably fast. The booster, uh, which is flying for its 20th time, also only approximately a three week turnaround between that as well. And as you can see, uh, we are getting pretty darn close to fueling here. And yes, uh, in terms of missions at the same pad. So this is getting that much closer as we get ready to start wrapping up loading of the propellants, which is the RP-1 and the liquid oxygen. Excellent. Ken Schaefer, thank you for gifting 20 red team memberships. So much support on this stream. You guys are the best. Like, holy cow. Make sure you thank uh, Ken, if you got a membership from them. 98 Central is asking, will Danger Van ever be seen again? It's like SN15 to me. Danger Van still exists. It's at our river lot. Um, so if you're in Starbase, you can look at it from like Highway 4. That's, that's fine to do. Um, but no current plans to put Danger Van back out in the field. Although, who knows? Never say never. But that is what uh, Danger yep. Cart is for. The, the fancy trailer that we have. It'll buff out. The damage to Danger Van will buff out. It'll I still think you just, you Das know, was right, and we should turn on. Danger Van into a Danger Camino. Um, Agreed. But that's neither here nor there. Stage one locks. Got to put a. Uh, Thank you, Sawyer. We and Gotta we're coming up on on, back. on T minus <laughs> two minutes. Uh, what are we going to see here? Another little happy vent from the rocket. Uh, that next little vent will be the indication that the liquid oxygen load on the second stage has been completed. Just like the T minus 20 minute vent, this vent is the final purge of the lines as well. As we've talked about, just like with the uh, retract, you don't want the uh, super flamey stuff at the bottom that can be flammable near liquid oxygen that might be remaining inside. So it's a final clear out and uh, we are just getting that much closer to launch under two minutes. Excellent. And so once we hit T minus one minute, the vehicle's onboard computer will take control and uh, everything will be internal on the Falcon 9 at that point. Hopefully here in just a few seconds, we will see the 20th launch of a booster for the first time. What a milestone. There's that vent, by the way. So that is H2 locks load complete. Sweet. All right, here we go. T minus one minute. Vehicle should be on internal power. And, and the clock. Also, the tank should be pressurized to flight level. Excellent. And the clock continues to tick down. Should hear a uh, report from the LD go for launch here in a second. Standing by for that. 30-ish seconds to go. go for launch. Excellent. LD reporting go for launch. It's getting real. It's time to lick the stamp and send it, chat. I'm just going to send it. Said SpaceX. Just going to send it. T-15. 15, 15 seconds. Here we go. Watch for the green flash and the ignition of the engines. There it is. And liftoff of Falcon 9 B-1062 for the 20th time, launching 23 Starlink satellites into space. Let's listen in.
believe I heard a VAB squeal in there. Oh yeah, totally. That was a good one. Vehicles going through max Q right now. Maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. So this is a key point for a 20th flight booster. Looks like it's doing just fine. And you can see the exhaust plume beginning to expand as the rocket ascends into thinner and thinner atmosphere. I love that blue on the end of the flame there. Beautiful. I believe this is D tracking. Excellent work, D. We are coming up about 30 seconds away from three events in rapid succession, which is Miko, main engine cutoff, and the nine Merlin 1D engines shut down, followed by separation of the first and second stage, and then SES-1, which is second engine start one, when the Merlin vacuum engine exists. Fantastic. Is this airball streaking through the sky? It really is. Is this auto track right now? This is great. Or is this D? All right, here we go for stage sep. That was the Cape Cam, Jack. Oh, excellent. Roger operating Cape Cam. Good job, Roger. Sorry about the fire track. Good sep right there. Good sep. And Upper stage ignition, yes. no stiffener ring. Yeah, they, they did away with the stiffener ring recently, which is uh, fascinating. And one less thing for people in chat to be like, I saw an alien! It's like, no, 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 just stiffener ring. And there we go. Boost, the booster is now coming back to attempt its 20th landing as the 23 Starlinks continue upwards. We should be coming up shortly as well on payload fairing summary. Absolutely outstanding turnaround time on this pad. An absolutely outstanding turnaround time on B1062. 20th launch in the books. Now we are going to get... That. You can see the fairing halves in the trail. Oh, look at that. That's Beautiful. excellent. Nice. And now the rest right, are seeing our stars in the background. Second stage doing its thing, muscling the sats into orbit. First stage doing its thing, coming back to land on a shortfall of Gravitas for the 20th landing of a booster. 20th launch under its belt. Now we're just waiting for 20th landing. Holy cow, what a beautiful launch. If nothing else, even if it doesn't land, that primary objective is complete. 20 launches. To try and get that second stage up and eventually deploy those Starlink satellites. Yeah, I remember when it's people impressive. were like, oh, booster reuse is impossible. And then people were like, oh, even if it was possible, it won't be financially viable. And then, yeah, and, and now we're here. 20 launches of a single booster. <laughs> yeah, Jack, just that keep moving wonderful. that drone ship. Just moving the dr keep moving the drone ship downrange, just like the goalposts. Just move the drone ship downrange more. <laughs> nice. Right? I was one of the deniers originally, and I have uh, pulled a Peter Beck and eaten my hat many times now. <laughs> really? I, I had no idea you were a denier. Way back in the day, yeah. No kidding. Well, it's was... hard to argue with evidence and uh, props for, for coming around. It's one of those where I was very happy to be proven wrong. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right, second stage continuing to do its thing. Hopefully we have a cool thing here for entry and landing burns. No promises. I don't know that it's working, but we should hopefully, fingers crossed, get some extra cool views here as the booster comes back to land on the drone ship. We are approximately uh, 30 seconds away now from the... Uh, first stage entry burn as well. Nice. Supersonic retro propulsion. Oh yeah. This is That's wait, part so of my this day. is the this is the thing? Is this the thing? This is the thing, dude. This is. This oh my god. Okay, so Lon is out in the Bahamas and is bringing us this view of the Falcon 9 booster coming in hot. How cool is that? I can't believe it worked. 
I believe that's stage two that's, still, but that is that's amazing. That's magical. Okay, okay, Stay, that's stage two. Let's see if they can get camera on stage one. And As here comes we, the entry burn. There's entry burn. Nice. That, I believe, is from our cape view. Oh, I think that's Lon. No, oh, no that's that is Lon. Lon. You're right, that that's is Lon. That's fantastic. Oh, man. So this is what you would see if you were out in the Bahamas. Excellent. Don't hate that. Don't hate that Don't hate that. No, Great. no, don't hate that. Great work from Lon <laughs> and the team doing all the troubleshooting necessary to get that working. Holy cow. So that was just entry burn. Let's see what kind of view Lon gets for landing. I'm excited. Which the uh, landing burn is set to begin in about a minute. All right, so stay tuned. I'm so excited. I've wanted us to have a camera out in the Bahamas for a long time, so this is excellent stuff. You can see there the first stage scrubbing off the velocity rapidly while the second stage piles it on. A little bit of plasma yes. there and the grid fins. All the stuff we love to see. Simulation there. I still can't believe that this is live streamed to us. You guys, you guys believe that? I'm just watching it's the first pretty, stage come back down. It's pretty crazy. I mean, the future. Yeah. And the second stage still going. <laughs> yep. The future is bright, much like that uh, non-stubby nozzle. <laughs> Which is made of niobium. Haha. -ha. Yeah. Well, sorry. It's All a right. niobium alloy. I gotta be. I gotta be precise, yes. otherwise chat will yell at me. Yes. All right, All right, we're we coming up. Be seeing that burn starting up. Coming up on landing burn. On. Let's see if Lon can get it. There Fingers is a slight delay between real time with Lon and the actual feed, but here we go. Got a landing burn. It's landing. A lot, it's landing. Through the clouds. Solid video all the way down. Can't complain Can't about deploy. that. Bingo! Oof. Oh. She moved around a little bit. A little bit of a wiggle. A little bit of a wiggle. A little it's wiggly, fine. but fine. number 20. That booster is now dash 21. That Amazing. is 20 flights of a booster in the record book. Wow. They make it look easy. And it's the bleeding edge of our current technology, and they make it look easy. I mean, it's that's just a 15-story building coming in. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, Falcon 9, the first stage, is as tall as a 15-story building. It's just, just landed. Whatever. All no right. big deal. It was just in space a second ago. It's pretty crazy. Oh, it doesn't get old. Uh, that... Especially now no. with the historic nature of that. As much as I think we would have loved for it to be 1058, we have a new record holder in the books in V1062. Fantastic. And we're working on you some know what the replays. Crazy thing is? Go ahead, EJ. Yeah. I was going to say, you know what the crazy thing is? There are two other boosters that are at 19 flights, if I'm remembering correctly. I mean, I I, Alex, right. double-check me just to be sure. That this, right. It's not like this is some... Yeah, it's not like this is some, uh, you know, like, oh, this one's only at 25. No, no, they got they, they got two more at 19, which is bananas. I agree. Yeah, that, it's absolutely wild. So it's not like this is going to be a one-off for a long time until they get, you know, until they do it again. It's like, we're going to see another 20th flight here probably very soon. <laughs> and hopefully soon after that, a 25th and a 30th and so forth. I mean, that's, that's what we all want to see. We want to see it. Not completely airliner-like operations, but as close as we can get to it with our current technology and, and hardware. And it certainly seems like that's where SpaceX is at. I actually saw a good question in chat there. Does it account? Does the drone ship account for tilting from the deck waves? Recovery conditions are are a uh, part of the launch criteria, Digger. Yeah, if the seas are too rough out there, I mean, I'm pretty sure SpaceX has some pretty conservative parameters for sea recovery conditions nowadays, uh, especially after what happened to 1058. But uh, yeah, it's part of the launch commit criteria. It's a good question. Sorry. No, no, don't, don't be know. sorry. That was a great question. Thank you, EJ. If you see any more, feel mm -hmm. free to sh shout them out. I was going to say barf them out, but don't do that. Shout them out. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, yeah, so we're working on some replays. We will get uh, some of the different views ready to go. So stand by for that. Julia, do we have you back yet? I believe she's currently working on some images right now of her street shot. So we will hopefully get that to you very soon. Excellent. Along with Julia's commentary. I, I like that she's working on streak shots. I like that. That means she got something. Uh, really quick, Gail H., thanks for becoming a Pad Rat member. And 98 Central saying, I wish SpaceX would post a full video of Octagrabber. I do kind of wish that too. Didn't we talk about Octagrabber in a Falcon 9 recovery video recently ish? Sawyer? Question mark? I believe we did. That's available on the NSF YouTube channel as well. Good deal. Do I get to ring the bell now? You do get to ring the bell and like and subscribe. Do I get to ring? All right. There you go. Oh, nice. yeah. Don't ask me why nice I heard that. Consummate yeah, yeah, professional yeah. as always. Thank you, EJ. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, Adam Baker is asking, is there a way to get pictures of a flight of picking from one of the crew? Uh, well, you can always reach out to the person who shot the image, and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to make you a print of it if it's not on the NSF store. I know a lot of us, too, as well, have um, personal stores. Like, I have a print shop on my own website. Um, photos will go up there that don't go on the NSF store, that kind of thing. So if there's a shot from somebody that you want that you don't see on the NSF store, check their website or reach out to them. And I'm sure the photographer would be flattered that you want to grace your uh, home or workspace with some of their work. So definitely. Never uh, hurts def to ask. Yeah, never hurts to ask. Good call, Sawyer. And thank you for the question, 98 Central. It really is like the biggest compliment um, you can you can give a photographer is by getting them a print or getting a print from them. I believe we have Julia back now too. Hello, hello. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. Um, hey Jack, I'm channeling my Elaine energy right now because we just saw <laughs> the twentieth launch of a booster and landing, therefore making it dash two one in the flow. And that was a beautiful launch, you guys. I know you guys saw it because I was watching on the stream as well as in person and oh, wow. That was beautiful. Although we did not, um, one disadvantage to clear skies is we did not hear it very loud, but um, we made up for that in beauty. And I actually did get a photo that I'm editing right now. I can't wait to see it. Um, let's see, Rudy T, thanks for upgrading to red team membership. Julia, I, like, I, I, I Half want to make Elaine jokes with you. Like, do you dance like Elaine if you have Elaine energy? Um, but also, <laughs> I, I want you to I want you to focus on editing your photos because I really want to see what you shot. I know we also have a slow mo coming in from D and also some other replays as well. So just a moment and we will get those up and running for you. Ditto nine thousand and three. Thanks for the super chat. They say, can a second stage engine used again if you were to recover it? Just curious. Great broadcast as always. EJ, what do you think? If you somehow manage to catch a second stage on, like, I don't know, a bouncy castle or something, uh, do you think <laughs> they'd be able to reuse a Merlin vac? Or do you think they optimize that engine differently and therefore uh, wouldn't really be a thing? Um, That's a super good question. I mean, are we just playing off the condition? Yeah, like, is it just going to be able to just come down? Like, say we just magically got our second stage back, right? I mean, I don't see why not. I, I would, I'm actually kind of where, I don't think the turbine machinery, I don't think that would be a big deal with the turbine machinery. They test all the Merlin vacuums at McGregor and then launch them again, right? Like, you, you know, well, not launch them again. They, they put, they, they put them on the test stand and then they, and they obviously fly into space. I'd be wondering about the nozzle, it, whether you'd have some type of ablation in there, but who knows? Uh, somebody smarter than me would probably know better. It's a good question, though. Super good question. Super good question. Keep the questions coming, y'all. 
Nine Eight Central also asking, wasn't Booster Ten Fifty Eight the one that didn't have stabilizing legs? Yeah, we talked about that a little while ago. It did mm-hmm. not, although the newer boosters do, right, Sawyer? Uh, yes, that, that's what they said at least in the post afterwards. That a lot of the newer ones do have the stabilizers. It's not clear which ones they define specifically mm-hmm. as the newer ones. Uh, so we don't know for sure if Ten Sixty Two has them, but hey, it's currently upright on the uh, drone ship, so that's a good start. A fantastic start, if I may say so. <laughs> Speaking of fantastic, we do have those views coming in. Oh, they're ready. Replays are ready. Let's take Ooh. a look. We've got to pull them out of the oven. Or off the grill. Careful. Careful, chat. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, why why, why did you do that? I want a burger so bad. Why did you do that? I'm we'll sorry. go get burgers after this one, Jack, you and me. Deal. What Thank am you I, chopped liver? So are you coming? I'm in. No, I was, I was, all right, cool. Let's do it, man. I like that we're not even talking about the replays. We're just talking about burger. Can we get a replay of that burger flip? <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> well, we've got the view at least here from Fleet Cam. Nice. I still say the Fleet Cam needs a Julia cardboard cutout in front of it, strategically placed. It's so cool seeing what looks like a little mini sun rising into the sky. Gotta love it. That's awesome. It really is. Here's another angle and from I'm one of our cape cams. Coming up over the trees. Oh. Oh, did it break? I think we might have broke it. What's high score mean? Did I break it? There it is. <laughs> Don't look broken to me. That is our tracking no, that, camera. That looks nice. Looks like was it's this working. the one that, that Roger was tracking with? This is excellent. I believe that's our auto track. Okay, this is auto track. Nice. Go! Oh my gosh, Julia, you're going to need to give me a warning before you post something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a photo. We're going to look at that photo in a second. Let's Let's do a couple more replays. Also, if you notice on the right-hand side, the transporter erector has gone vertical. You'll love to see it. Love to see it. Getting ready for the next mission. Right? That was fast, man. I mean, Very. dude, that, this, yeah, sorry, right? Like, this booster got out there fast. It was on, it was, we saw a picture of it being moved past the VAB, like, yesterday? Was that yesterday or the day before? It was, it was, it was real before. quick. Yeah. That's still super fast, considering... Gotta go yeah, really, really remarkable cadence from SpaceX. And I feel like we say that every stream, but they're only speeding up. So <laughs> it makes sense that we remark on it every stream. It's crazy. You know, there's a lot of things in the future that are annoying, but this, this isn't. This is great. You should <laughs> 100% keep agree. doing this. Hundred keep doing more of this. Agree. I like this timeline. This is great. Yeah. Me, me too. you love to see it. Love Here's to another see replay. It. I believe this is D's camera. Nice. Ooh, that is that. That's not a bad shot. Ain't that a is beaut? a spicy meatball. <laughs> Indeed. Dare I say, meat a ball? Oh. Beautiful shot of the plume there. Don't mind the uh, data moshing going on in the right side of the screen with the live view. <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with a little data moshing. Beautiful shot. Falcon 9 launching for the 20th time, the first time. Every time. I don't know. You get it. Yeah. Good try. I, I get the reference. Good try. That sixty percent of the time it launches every time. What is this? Huh? The the slow mo? No, no, no. This shot that we're watching the replay of. It's right. going sideways. 
That's Roger then. Oh, got it. That makes sense. That is Roger on Cape Cam. Yeah, w give it a second and wait. Wait, and uh, once the once the rocket gets a little bit higher, is when we got that super cool shot. Here we go. Focus. Oh. There you go. Yes. Excellent. If that doesn't show the fire and fury of, you know, all those nine Merlin engines, nothing does. Really, Sawyer? Really? Ooh, really? It's the truth. Fire and fury. You can't really? handle the truth. Nice. Nice. Good reference. <laughs> reference acknowledged. You saved the day. <laughs> That lawn shot, though. Right? What an excellent wow. shot from Lon out in the Bahamas. Thank you so much to Lon for getting us yes. that. Love to see it. You love to see it. Don't get to see that very often. And there is Grill Cam. Oh, we did get a burger replay. Oh, God, I'm so hungry. Why you Wait, who put this up there? Why are you doing this? Uh, there was the just finished product, by the way, for those who are... For those who are watching on NSF Live and didn't get to see the finished product, there it is. Why are you doing this? They look so Fun, good. Cool. They look so good. I, I got to say, which is better though, the crackle of the uh, Merlins or the crackle of the grill? Don't make me choose. Uh, <laughs> why? You, no. No, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, yes. <laughs> Cool. Do we have a uh, Kevin? Do we have D's slow mo shot that we can show? We do. If this is it, it is. It is. You know, Sawyer, I thought about I thought about your question for a second, and I don't mean to say this over D's shot because D's shot is fantastic. But how about we use a Merlin engine to grill burgers? I'm down. Wait, wait, wait. wait hear me out. A Merlin vac, and we can put it on the nozzle, on the, on the hot nozzle. Sounds good to me, man. Let's do it. Sounds good. By the way, who's gonna flip it? Though? The grill was pretty good. All right. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm also jealous of D's excellent slow mo. Fantastic. Yeah. Stuff. Beautiful shot. Yeah. Brilliant. Can't ignore the hat. I, I do really want a hamburger, though. We should start an NSF cooking show. Call it Cream Fresh. I have well, honestly, have... <laughs> but I'm honestly drooling still from these shots because these are just beautiful. So huge props to D for getting that and also getting it turned around nice and quick so we could see this live on air too. Absolutely, yeah, they're fantastic. Also, EJ, I'm a hundred percent here for an NSF cooking show. I, I would one hundred percent cook things on camera. Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. 28 launches from a single booster. It's I dude, I'm speechless. That's that's impressive. It's just impressive. Yeah, you there's know, really no other word for it. It, it. That's wild. That takes a lot of dedication, and a lot of hard work to get that done. You know. You know, I know I'm just some random guy that cracks wise about space on the internet, right? But I'm damn proud of SpaceX. That's Damn proud of them for what it's worth. It's really, really impressive. I'm sure a lot of people hours to make that happen too. Right. Such talent, such talent, such institutional knowledge there. That's it's it's wild. Look at never the seen blue anything like plume. this. Look at the blue right? and the plume. It's gorgeous. Fantastic. Great work from the Cape team all around. You love to see it. Firing on all cylinders. Love to see it. Oh, can we show? We have to show Julia's photo. We have to show Julia's photo. Yes, yes, we do. Do it, Kevin. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Let's do, do it, it, Kevin. Can do it. Got do it red. Neat. Scroll. Okay. You, you missed it. it. Scroll up. Do it. Just scroll up. It's right there. Do it. Do it, Johnny. Red. Neat. Okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Nice. Excellent work, Julia. Excellent work. 
I can't wait to see what the film version of this looks like. I bet it's outstanding. It's a great I know, shot. I hope so too. That was a vertical shot though with my camera because that lens isn't as wide. But I was so happy that what I did to make my camera stay open worked because there's even a re-entry burn in that photo. There oh, is yeah, right that. go towards the end of the oh, pier. Yeah. Nice. Wow. What That's did you impressive. do? What what did you do to get to keep the shutter open? I used time and amazingly it stayed open the whole time I needed it to. Nice. Fantastic. Yay. That's a great shot, Julia. Amazing Thank work. You. Not that I expect common... anything else besides amazing from you, but it, it the amazingness continues. Exceedingly <laughs> common, Julia W. Yes. Yep. We'd love to see it, Jack. Love to see it. Oh God! You know what I don't love to see though is my own face. <laughs> I guess we should probably uh, next, wrap up you, uh, the launch. Did you tell us and... next time you're going to cut to the camera. Jeez, he, he kind of did. He did like when repeatedly. <laughs> when he's from Boston, he doesn't read. Did you get that man? <laughs> no comment. The memo. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Drew Nar, thank you for the super chat. They say twelve launches in twelve days in April. Is that is that accurate? Have they launched twelve times in April already. That seems yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Pretty, Someone pretty with impressive. a spreadsheet would probably be able to correct that. Al okay, no, Alex is saying no. But maybe later in the month? Question mark. How many are we on for the month, though? I Alex? mean, that would set a record, I believe. So. This is the seventh, seventh launch, launch of, of the month. month. Still crazy. 12 days into the month. Yeah. I was going to say, because we are only 12 days into the month. So um, that's bonkers. Absolutely. Michael or Micah B, thanks for the support. Uh, they say, what is SpaceX's current cutoff for booster reuses? If any, this coverage is awesome. Thanks, NSF team. Ooh, I don't know that there is one at this point. Seems like they're just going to keep pushing on. I think it's to be determined. S. Roger Bach, thank you for the super chat. They say $20 for Flight 20. The whole crew is awesome, but this team rockets. <laughs> Fun ah, token. Oh, okay. Good deal. And Drunar, thank you for that super chat as well. Oh, and thanks y'all for watching NSF Live slash Starlink four dash six dash forty uh, something. Six forty nine. Nine. Forty nine. Nine. Thank you. Thank you. Forty nine. Nine. Forty <laughs> every, yeah, every, nine. Forty nine. <laughs> Everyone is yelling at me nine now. Thank you. I see that. Thank you, Jay. Um cool. Well, EJ, thanks for being on and, and dealing with the troubleshooting fun time. Yeah. Uh, that's what I get for trying a new setup. But hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I know it's a privilege coming on here, uh, and I do appreciate. It. I don't take it lightly. I like to have a good time, but you know, get into the nitty gritty, commentating on launches. It's always fun. I do appreciate it. Thanks for having me, everyone. Always a treat having you, EJ. Always a treat. Sawyer, thank you as well for being on. It's always a pleasure. I mean. <laughs> This is the only time when you can cover a rocket launch on the rails just a few minutes after going completely off the rails. It's only at NSF and only on NSF Live, Friday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. Nice. Yeah, you know, I'll admit it, also, was, it was hard shifting gears into serious mode there. I was trying. <laughs> I still am, all I can think about is that hamburger. Um, we also I had... Do. We also had D out in the field operating the tracking camera and a slow mo rig. We had Julia out in the field shooting photos. Thank you to both of them. Uh, we had Kevin and Jay in the background operating the stream. We had Lon out in the Bahamas. What a crazy sentence that I get to say. Team NSF firing on all cylinders. Roger operating a tracking camera remotely. Um, if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, with that, we will let you all nerds go. Let's all go eat some hamburgers. Yes. And for those who <sighs> don't eat meat, there's also the uh, non-meat versions. There's plant burgers, things like that, too. So we can all enjoy. I maintain that Impossible Burgers are delicious, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So don't oh, be mad when we get to the moo. <laughs>
And thanks to our launch directors and flight engineers. Thank you to all of our members, especially our launch directors and flight engineers who get your name at the end of NSF Live episodes. So uh, squint and you might be able to see it down there. But yes, <laughs> thank you. We could not do it. Jack, we you got to read all the names. Uh, Jack, here, you got to read, read, read them all. Read them off. I'll read them all real fast. Here we go. Ah, there. It was all the names. Oh, wow. In, into a <laughs> short data burst. Oh, right, that was here. impressive. Gifts again. Gift time. We're, we're doing the gifts again. Uh, it's the chef's always. kiss. That's Stop Sawyer's mic. mic drop. <laughs> there better be a burger gif. Uh, I, I, what was I that? Was that like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, something? <laughs> no, it, it, it was uh, uh, Tungy. Oh, Jack being all red. <laughs> that was funny. Who made Sawyer laugh? That was when I made you laugh. Oh, I forgot what I yeah. did. Me, me uh, and my stupid yeah. voice. There it is! Why? Yes. Oh, dude. Why? I'm so Stop. hungry. Stop. Stop Best doing this. Why are you doing this to us, Kevin? Let Best it end. Gift of the night. And here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. Following up.